Listen, I'm ready to get into some basketball. Psych, nigga, not NBA. Come what? on now. What? But that's Come the on. only. That's my favorite sport. I like the way they dribble up and down the court, just like Doctor Dillon and the microphone, Doctor J and Moses Malone. That's the problem. We need a Doctor J and Moses Malone. This past weekend that was, was honestly the greatest weekend of basketball. <sighs> No funny since 2016. The greatest weekend? I said it. Did the finals happen on the weekend? They play games on the final. They play games on the weekend. Ain't it every three days? That's kind of. (laughs) He said that. I'm like, does that correlate? Hmm. Look at you trying to to humble women. Here you go. (laughs) I came to Pander. I don't know if y'all knew that. I came to Pander. Straight up. I ain't even going to sugarcoat it. Okay. Pander Bear Moore. Yeah, I, I would have put the panda bear suit on if I wasn't outside. Um, no, but on a serious tip, pause. Uh, this this was literally, literally the greatest weekend of basketball in a long time for me specifically. Uh, when I get into the numbers of things, it'll really put into perspective, you know, just really how out of control basketball was. For those that are living up under a rock and don't know, uh, we not only had the final four games between LSU and Iowa, and or no, I'm sorry, UConn and Iowa and NC State and USC. We also, also, also had the championship game where Iowa took on um, USC. Both, all of them great games. To be honest with you, all of them great games, names, faces, Dominance, storylines, all that stuff like that. At the end of the day, the day gone in. Uh, shouts out to Columbia. The Gamecocks came out on top. If you're not, if you if you don't know what the 803 is, 803, put it in the chat right now. If you're from the 803, 803. If you live off Main Street or Two Notch Road, you feel what I'm saying? Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat right now. Pineville Drive. You feel what I'm saying? Really throwing it up. You feel what I'm saying? Y'all think I'm playing too? Like I really ain't from there. Um, oh, they went 38 and oh, 803. Mm. Oh my god. Um, no, but on a serious note, yeah, they won a uh, pretty convincing fashion, especially in the second half. Don Staley, two rings, three rings, three-time champion now. Uh, completed the undefeated season. I mean, t- from from those that watched, what's your takeaway, man? It was amazing. It was truly amazing. Shouts out to Two Notch Road, man. <laughs> go. Um, uh, I mean, we already had our mini pod, so y'all, y'all go. Oh, okay. Shit. Uh, hey, or well, be the bearer of bad news. Um, I wasn't impressed. I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, Kaylin Clark did her thing. She came out hot. It was a cool little quick start, but the better team got a hold of the game. And held that ass down. Like I don't, I don't know what the, a second year in a row while I tuned into Caitlin Clark, and she's getting ma- woman handled. Not even man handled. She's getting woman handled. Um, I don't know what his name was in South Carolina. Did a great job defending her. She had a great game. Raven Johnson, uh, put respect on her name. Put respect. Raven, on Raven Johnson. Raven Johnson did a great job guarding Caitlin Clark. In the finest. Hey, that black woman wasn't scared to guard her. Unlike the ones down at LSU. Um, she. Did her did her job. Um, okay. South Carolina did their job. They are literally are what is it? They only lost three games in the last three years. This feels like watching the the the, the late twenty tens Warriors win. Like, all right, you were supposed to, my nigga. Like, I don't know, I I don't know what there was to expect with this. Uh, shout out Don Staley. That's your name, right? That's the coach. Um, Stop moving back and forth, talking to Mike. What you doing, J Cole? You don't, you don't know if you want to be on the mic or not. Here we go. 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 Anyway, Don Staley, right? That's her name. Shout out to her. Crazy credentials. Uh, can't see the recruit. Can't wait to see the recruiting class for next season. See what they got at South Carolina. How many of them were seniors that are that aren't gonna be there? I know the big girl ain't gonna be there, right? <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, one. Oh. Like everyone else is coming back. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, two crews. Oh, damn. Well, me too. Oh, I'm about to say, well, see y'all again next year. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. See you again next year. Um, shout out Caitlin Clark. The hate she gets is unnecessary. I hate it seeing some of the hate that she got this weekend, and I can't wait for my hot take because I know exactly who I'm about to shit on. But yeah, that's really it. Go ahead, Sage. 
Uh, for me, Omni Casual here. Um, one, I echo your last sentiment. Some people on Twitter were going back and forth with me as if Kalen Clark isn't getting hate. Um, first of all, everyone does. And then second of all, even if she wasn't, um, this is a thing that's been notorious for months. It's not even just because of Shawty that was announcing during the game, which was crazy, by the way. But um, now that that's out the way, in terms of Caitlin Clark herself and her play, uh, I'm not going to lie. I had my little troll on Twitter talking about this is more hard than LeBron, but nah. It, it, it was, I don't want to say her teammates are bad, but they're clearly outmatched. They're, they're clearly not on the same level. Um, the size was depressing to watch. Especially like when that specific loss to South Carolina, bro. I was I was in a motherfucking Texas roll house, bro, watching that shit and bored, 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 bored. They had like ten straight possessions in the second quarter of offensive rebounds. It, it was it was like crazy how they just couldn't get a fucking board to save their life and it was just a thematic through that you could even argue iowa was low-key hooping and maybe even out hooped but they couldn't get a board they could, could not control the pace of play could not control the tempo and it was just over with you knew it was just a matter of when south carolina got it going uh the the girl that was defending um what's her name sorry i forgot it um definitely was locking up caitlin or right, right. not locking up but playing damn good defense oh no locking up i ain't gonna lie i love i love caitlin face guarding Hey, she, 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 she was doing her thing. She was doing her thing. Um, in terms of in general, uh, Kaylin, I'm excited to go to the WNBA. Um, not even just for the shit talk thing, but most importantly, I ain't gonna lie. Kaylin, people were telling me that there's a number two, whether it was Paige, whether it was Juju, whoever. Nah, Kaylin, I think was number one by a lot by a, a long shot from what I've seen. Very small sample size. I'm a casual. Kaylin, Kaylin, different nigga. I didn't, didn't take that long. But um, I'm excited to see what she does in the WNBA. Uh, South Carolina, apparently a perfect team. So it's nothing to cry about. You lost to a perfect team, didn't get your ass whooped. You you just personally could have done better. But how much better could you have done against that team? Yeah, it's tough to beat a team when even when they fuck up, they just get another offensive rebound. So they get another shot. And then even if they fuck up, they get it again. A um, couple things. Number one, it uh, solidified to me that, hey, it already has been, but basketball is a vertical sport. Tall people dominate the game, and the more height you can get from every single position, you know what I'm saying? That That's how you get matchups like this. Uh, number two, um, I personally thought it was going to be a blowout going into the game, and if anything, it over-exceeded my expectations with how competitive it was, um, especially just out the gate. 10-0 ten, ten run? 10 run out the gate was crazy. Um, I believe... Yeah, South Carolina was looking kind of sloppy until uh, Malaysia for a while. He came into the game and uh, started their offense. Their defense was was solid throughout the whole game. Um, and then in the second half, once the, the shot started to fall, um, it, it just opened up everything. Offensive rebounding was still there. Defense still held up, and it just opened up everything. And even then, Iowa still got it within six at one point after back-to-back -back threes. And then um, they had a chance to get it to single digits, but then... Uh, like on the fast break, they fumbled the ball, and that was to me the dagger of the game. Um, but yeah, it was it, it was a great game. Uh, South Carolina played great. They they did what a dominant team would do. They did what a team that I would hope has only lost three times over the last three years would do on a stage like that. They got the job done. That's that's what that's what dominant teams do. Um, and on the flip side, hey man, like I said, Caitlin Clark's legacy was cemented regardless of the result. That's gonna sound like dick suck. But, um, yeah, her legacy when it comes to women's basketball and her impact, that was cemented by just the amount of people that watched that game. I ain't going to lie. But. I have so much shit to get off. And I really don't know where to start. There's so much word vomit for me. I am running circles and victory laps about a lot of takes that I've had lately. And this is like the all-encompassing one of them, for real, for real. First of all, shouts out to both sides. Shouts out to... Matter of fact, shouts out to the entirety of women's college basketball. There's been so much unearthed this run this last year about the bullshit that goes behind it, some of the narratives that just aren't true. And I'm talking about the people that claim that it's bad and all that stuff. Um, they don't get the numbers, et cetera, et cetera. There's a visibility issue. And it was shown this year. Just simple fixes. Y'all know they couldn't use the term March Madness? Up until like last year, 
They could not call it March Madness for women's. They called it the women's tournament. That, that hurts. That's our, that hurts the search engines. That hurts the merchandising. ESPN has been holding the rights for 10 years and they could not put it on the main channels, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, uh, they had it on ESPN, the Ocho, the Final Fours and the Elite Eights. They had it on ESPN 3 and shit like that. But when you make something visible, then, then you can see if people enjoy it or not. If you watched it and you didn't enjoy it, I'm not talking to you. I really am not. But to the people who had the opportunity to see it because the dickheads at the top of these companies finally decided to get their heads out of their ass. Now you're able to see what a lot of people have been talking about. Um, I wanna, I'm going to go back to congratulating them. Dog, the last three games of Caitlin Clark's career, 12.3 million, 14.2 million, 18.7 million. Every single game broke a record for female basketball viewership, women basketball viewership. The last two games broke basketball records. Fuck it, broke sports records. Oh, oh man, that again. Let me say that again. They broke basketball, collegiate or professional, and then broke sports records. They peaked at 24 million viewers last night. You don't just do that. There's a, there's a transcending conversation going on. But they wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to see that if the visibility uh, 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 wasn't so high. Right. I'm looking at this this chart right here or some of these graphics about it. Let me uh, find the right tweet right here. I think this is it. Boom. Nicole Auerbach. Shout out to Red Man. Uh, most watched women's college basketball game on record since 1992. 8.7 million viewers on ABC uh, uh, ESPN. Uh, this is based on Nielsen's ratings. Viewership up 89% from 2023 and 285% from 2022 from two most recent National Women's Championships games. Those, those broke records too. Peaked at 24 million views. Most watched basketball game, men's or women's, college or pro since 2019. Excluding football and Olympics, most watched sporting event since 2019. By the way, that football that they're referencing is the Super Bowl. That's what they're talking about. This is a different conversation that we're having now. And the whole time it's because people couldn't see it. I think that's the most, I think that's the most outrageous thing. I want to go back to that. We'll, we'll get onto that in a minute because the NBA's got a problem. And I'm ready to circle that. Shout out to Caitlin Clark, all of her teammates. I'm not going to spend too much time. Y'all know how I feel about Caitlin Clark, transcendent talent, all that stuff like that. Hannah Stokey is only 6263. Camilla Cardosa is 67. You do the math. I don't – they ran out a bunch of people on Iowa who were 5'11", 6 foot, 6 foot 1 versus a slew of 6 foot or 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just at, at a certain point, there's too much size. You can only make so much shots. And then when Raven Johnson sits down, hey, shouts out to Nick, Nika Mule or whatever, that gimmicky defense, it's not happening. You got tired. You ended up getting a little torched towards the end of the game. Raven Johnson said after that 18 point first quarter that that Caitlin Clark had on some LeBron James shit, she said, "Oh, I'm about to sit. I'm sitting. I'm sitting. Hands up." And all I think all four of the turnovers that she caused were straight up. Oh, I'm picking the pocket. I'm 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 cookie in you straight up. That's a real defender. That's a no doubles, <laughs> no blitzes. Let me. I'm getting over every screen. And I'm 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 with you. I'm on your shit. A block. She got a block too by being. That's real defense, man. Yeah, I'm Haley. On... Fuck Haley. Yeah, uh, uh Trey Young. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> uh, no, I, I, we, we need to talk about it. Defense is back. That shit is cool again. Um, never left. Yeah, that would be my argument. Never left. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't see that. I don't see that no more. I'm gonna be one of them guys. Yeah, I don't. I don't see that no more. I just don't. I really don't see that no more. Um, congratulations to both teams, for real, for real. Congratulations to women's basketball. It's it's only going up from here. Um, I guess this will be a time we can jump into it. I feel like the NBA has a problem. I don't know if y'all feel like the NBA has a problem. NBA has many problems. It has many problems, but 
What about specifically this weekend? Yeah, yeah what this problem? They uh, told yeah, me up. that streaming was an issue, and that's why viewership is dropping. Oh man, not again. This showed me yeah, do that. that that was some bullshit. Oh man, not again. Even in the playoffs, everybody every time somebody says, Oh, well, you know, the streaming, the numbers just go down because people are using illegal websites. Y'all think people didn't have illegal websites? Not only just this uh, this postseason, but the numbers were up across the board for the entire collegiate season for the women. Y'all telling me that streaming is the problem? That's your, that's your P-brain answer? Y'all don't think that there's an issue with the product at all when numbers like this are out here? Be honest. If I'm tripping, I'm tripping. Be honest. I think that's a bad cop-out answer to what's the NBA streaming problem to say that ah they're missing 40% of the viewers because Stream East exists. I think that's a cop-out. But I mean, it's 82 games. I mean, I, I, it's just hella games. That's probably why the viewership is down. Niggas like to watch you highlights. The no, viewership is... Okay, here we go. What that guy... Nah, 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 some of the college stuff. Yeah. We've got to stop. The, how many college games are there? No, no, I'm sorry. What does that have to do? Because there's a lot of regular season college games. The regular how many? Views are up too. But what does that have to do with the playoffs too, Damo? I know we talk. You I know. Have to do with the playoffs what? Too. what is that? Playoff viewership is down too, Damo. Yes, because one people the the viewership is still torn because people it, it's highlight culture in the NBA. That's a problem. People rather watch highlights than full games of the NBA. There's less college games, and it's a newer product. Even you just said, as of last year, they just got the ability to be put on regular ESPN. So it's a new thing. People like new shit, and they have genuine stars that they just aren't used to. So they have Marvel people. Wait, wait, wait. You are, you are a very a high proponent of people don't want new shit. I'm surprised you even backed that one out because you bring that up all the time when it comes to TV shows and movies. And stuff like that. You do bring that up all the time. Yeah, I do bring that up. And the fact that we are talking about basketball, where we all can acknowledge that there is an issue with the NBA product, and most people are NBA fans, and if they get fed up to the point to where they need their fix somewhere else, if there is an open availability of good basketball being played, which we can all agree the women were playing good basketball this year, good stars, people do, playing basketball all different levels and different types, and they shifted there. So uh, and and that's where I really want you to focus. So you acknowledge that there are problems with the NBA and what's going on right now. Yes, no let's one should say it. Right. Let's talk about it. What's the what's those problems? Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Yeah. I mean, I feel like what I would say is different than audience, but for me personally, they don't market enough of the younger stars. It's not enough eyes on the entire league. They force feed the same niggas all the damn time, so it gets stagnant. Niggas get tired of Curry storylines, LeBron storylines. Whoever's on the Clippers when they're doing good, niggas get tired of that shit. And the young guys that are coming up playing fine aren't getting enough screen time on on for the NBA. They're not getting enough TV, national TV games. I've been saying it since the beginning of this year when I noticed it. That's one issue, in my opinion. Sage? I would I would actually just disagree because, uh, whatchamacallit, the, the last NBA Finals appearance that had really good ratings was when Steph Curry was in it. So people have been making the argument that, like, Motherfuckers only care about the NBA Finals when Steph Curry is in it recently, if anything. Um, but I do think the, the NBA has a marketing issue in terms of... And I'm not even sure it's entirely their fault of like trying to find that next face of the league to really push. Because some of the players that they've been really trying to push have just not panned out for one reason or another. I, I really think it was supposed to be John Zion. That was supposed to be the next-gen American superstar that we're going to push... But Zion, we all know what happened with him. Uh, ja, same thing what happened with him. I also think, as dick suck as it sounds, Jason Tatum's in that discussion as well, but he just cannot get the fucking job done. I also think from a production standpoint, he is not there yet. Um, but Wemby and Luka, they are in there. But um, I've, I don't know. I, I just feel like that American athlete push is just different from overseas push. I Personally, I don't care, but when it comes to numbers, it's just... I think it's just hard to push non-American products to an American, uh, which I'm calling to American fan base. Can I ask what was the viewership difference between 2021 and 2022, the finals? Um, I'll look it up right now. I'll look it up right now. Sage, what, what are your thoughts? 
what like what do i think is negative on the nba or how do What's i feel the about problem it? with the nba what's going on why, why is the viewership down i don't want that cop-out answer of streaming is it's debunked i don't want oh. that oh i'm the same take i had months ago the nba is the most self-depreciating self-hating community and product that i know of right now i truly think that when people booed that hot take didn't care because I'm 50 million toes on it. it every every time whether you're going to go to Beastles' point about European players people are dunking on European players this is the only sport that is iconic uh, I should say with or iconically doing the hey my era is better than your era my era is better than your era thing every time something happens every time a record's broken it's not it doesn't count it was ass overrated different era anything like that it's it, this community don't even like itself <laughs> the, com- the community don't like, even like itself. Like, what are we talking about? This is the most self-hating thing. So as a result, if you're a new viewer and you're hearing, seeing everybody say it sucks, you're, oh, well, shit, I'm going to watch it. And if you're an old viewer and at some point everyone's saying this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks. At some point, one of them will be like, you know what? You're right. So, yeah, um, maybe Damo has some validity. Maybe Vsauce has some validity. But even their points tie back into, yeah, people just hate the product. Uh, real quick, Dom, I got it right now. For 2021, only one, uh, two games cleared 10 million. Uh, elimination game had 12.2. First two games had around nine. First three, first four games had around nine mil. But for 2022, every single one of them cleared 10 million, right around an average of 12 million. And then the last game peaked at 14 million viewers. So pretty significant, like two, two, three mil every single game. Now, the gap between that and 2023, though, is not that big. I would want to say. The storylines to me aren't there. The, the the villains, the heroes, the people that people can latch to. And I, I am in the belief that people really don't people really don't care to create them or be a part of them anymore. Um, it doesn't serve them any good. Uh, everybody wants to be a nice guy, all that stuff. I know that might sound like the old person answer. But what I saw this weekend was a lot of buildup. It was a lot of tension. It was a lot of tension to be built up. And nobody really wants to go down this path anymore of doing it. I can think of maybe a couple of people in the NBA that have a good storyline, something that you really want to follow. But especially from like an American perspective, and Bezos touched on it because a lot of y'all don't care to follow a European person. Uh, they're not going to give you what they want or what you want, and you also don't want to follow it. There's not a lot of stories that we care about anymore uh, in the NBA, manufactured or otherwise. Uh, I do think that to a degree the level of play is there as well. Like I said, we can get behind people playing all 40 minutes. Shouts out to Caitlin Clark and Gabby Marshall for doing that for three, four, five straight games in a row. We can get behind people playing defense and just sitting on people's handles and all that stuff. If the perception is that it's not in the NBA, no matter how many of you diehard fans can name it or whatever the case may be, that is the overwhelming perception. As validated, like Safe said, by the players of the past. Yeah, that shit not there no more. They're not playing defense. They don't care. The regular season don't matter. The all-star game don't matter. Playoffs don't matter until you get to the second half of the second round, third round. None of that shit matters. So if none of the NBA matters, if none of the regular season matters, all-star doesn't matter, seeding doesn't matter, just getting to the playoffs, if none of that stuff matters anymore, ultimately, when we get to the big dance, when it should matter, why would it matter? Who cares? should only matter on, like, game six of the NBA finals type shit. What? Who, if, if I'm not following the storylines of the Hawks or the Magics or the, 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 the Kings, or if I'm not following these people and they're not building that relationship with me throughout the entire year, when it comes June, I'm, oh, well, uh, whatever. I, I don't got to follow them. Fuck it. Who cares? That's the, I think the... I, I think you're wrong about it not being storylines in the NBA. You just have to do your due diligence of knowing what's going on and who's beefing with who and who dislikes who. That's um, the problem. What's that's the problem? The, that you have to know what's going on? Do you, Wouldn't do you, you think, have to... You think you had to do your due diligence about Caitlin Clark this weekend? After the past year of it being shoved in your face? No. That's the point. I, if like, we're trying to reach peak viewership, it's not about the diehard fan that will pay attention regardless of what the fuck is going on. 
Like, when I was talking about the 2023 finals, obviously me, you, Omar, Sage are going to watch that NBA finals because of the fact that we're NBA fans. And we're going to watch the NBA fan uh, NBA finals regardless. But the difference is, is when we're talking about the casual, what's going to push this thing to new heights, what's going to uh, make people who do not watch this thing watch this thing, it's going to have to be some easy... Uh, low barrier to entry type shit. That's 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 just. If you want to say that the NBA, if you want to say the NBA has a problem pushing it, that's absolutely fine. But to say it's not there is just wrong. If you don't believe me, what was the viewership of the elimination game when Luca went crazy on the Suns? What was the viewership for that game? Because there was build up for that. They they pushed what Luca being mad about X, Y, and Z. There was a little chatter about that. But yeah, I do feel like there's a, a problem with marketing in the NBA. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I won't deny that. But like I said, if the argument is or the statement, oh, there's no storylines or the storylines aren't there in the NBA, that's just not true. It is. I'm a, nobody it's just not being pushed like that. About Anthony Edwards and his beef with the Minnesota, not the Minnesota, but the Memphis Grizzlies. Nobody cares about that, bro. Who said it? Who was talking about that? Because I was talking about how Ant feels about the calls SGA gets. I was also talking about how Luca despises the fucking Suns and the Clippers, and it's looking like the Mavericks might end up playing the Clippers in the first round of the playoffs, and if you don't think that's going to be an exciting first round, then, hey, that's on you, but that's a story. As a, as a, as a diehard basketball fan, of course, I would think, as as Luka, as Omar Luka Griggs, I definitely think that to be the case. Again, but to say the storylines aren't there, I feel like that is not true. If you want to say the NBA isn't doing its due diligence of pushing shit, I absolutely agree. That's two different things. To say it's not there just isn't true. It's just not being pushed the same way Caitlin Clark shit was being pushed. Caitlin Clark was being put under a, ma a, a magnifying glass, especially after the national championship game last year with the whole debacle between her and LSU and the you can't see me shit and all that. It was a bunch of shit that pushed it. And then going into this year, the hate she got, the discourse about who's the best cop. Yes, they did their due diligence of pushing the right shit. What? Cardiac said that that game six, 6.3 million views. And I just don't know what I'm talking about, Dan. Fuck it. That's low. That's low, right? I don't, I don't, know, what the, I don't know what I'm talking game about. Game six then. or game seven? I thought it was game seven when Luca dogged him. Mm, I thought it was game. Well, no, you're right. It went to seven games. We can look up the game seven, too. I mean, I, I've been trying to look it up. I can't, can't find it. Oh, Cardiac but, said that was game seven. He said it's for that one. 6.3. I mean, I'll, I'll throw, I'll, I'm on Damo's side in this regard. I just think for the NBA um, to reach, like, the viewership that the NCAA reached this past week, and this is extremely hard when games are a seven-game series instead of single elimination because inherently every single game has just less stakes. Now, if Omar, if you want to say the NBA should just move to towards single elimination, I guess that would be a different argument. But I just, maybe in terms of ratings... I, again, I just can't expect those type of ratings on a every single game basis unless it's on some 2016 final shit. I don't I don't I don't expect it to be record breaking numbers every time. Like I don't I really don't higher, higher than that. And they've always been not always been, but they've been that in the past B souls where it is. Oh, we, we have seven game series or whatever the case may be. I am looking at it out there. <laughs> 2016 huh? was 2016 was like 17 to 20 every game. <laughs> They've been that before. They have been that before. So we can't we can't keep chucking it up to the the bullshit answers. In my opinion, we just we can't. We literally cannot. As simple as that to me. Um, I'm about to cut it off on YouTube. If you want to catch the rest of the live stream. You got blah, blah. Blah, blah. I'm about to Play spam the link up chat. Oh man. L K I A B. There's no that. way. Hi guys I'm on the so YouTube side. CK Randy, I, I promise you I'm not focusing on a niche thing. He addressed two, three things that were an issue. I disagree with one, so I spoke up on it. Get the dick out your mouth. Like, what are we talking about? He he said these are three problems. I disagree with one. I spoke on it. What the fuck are we like? What are we talking about? What, I'm supposed to just agree with the nigga? I'm supposed to just shut the fuck up if I disagree. Brandon Mitchell came in there and was like, "Yo, no, me personally, <laughs> he always on the YouTube shit. <laughs> Yo, I mean, Yo, y'all back, huh? <laughs> Let's see y'all here, man. Um, 
I yeah, I think I think that there is a, a plethora of things that could happen. I do want to go into um, the next thing. First of all, I, I do want to talk about this. Did y'all did y'all see the fouls? Did y'all the, the foul? And it, mind you, I can say these things now, and we know what we know what people are talking about. It's on the screen. Yeah, did you see the foul? Yeah, foul. No, you didn't see the foul. I didn't watch the game. But it's not a foul, you, you idiot. You, 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 you don't make that call in that moment. <laughs> that's, what really that, that's what it really is. That's what it really is. That's what the really is, man. In the moment, it did ca- catch me off guard. I will say that. I'm like, oh, oh shit, what the fuck? Where was the foul? But You felt like you had to watch How the much game? Is- what huh? happened? Damo, you felt like you had to watch the game to see the foul? Man. No. The foul, man. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You didn't. You didn't see it. I will say this too. I'm being funny. I will say this too. The NCAA also has it right. Um, you know, you can watch all the games on the March Madness website or March Madness YouTube page. Full length, no highlights, no none of that shit. You can watch all two hours of it. The, the day website. after, or like live, live. Uh, I think it's and not even the day, like hours after. If I'm mm-hmm. not. Cause I I asked on Twitter I was like uh yo where can I where can I watch the uh, game like I want to watch the playback I want to go through all these fouls with y'all if you think this was a foul pull up I'll, I'll stream the shit and we can watch it and somebody was like yo if you just go on um if you just go on playback or if you just go on MarchMadness.com it's there all the games I don't know if this is all of them let me show you real quick though I said all the games I don't know if this is all of them. But this is, oh snap! Can you see it? No. Yes. All right. Cool. This is the Iowa UConn game, South Carolina NC State game. That's from the second round right there. Uh, if you keep scrolling down, the LSU game is somewhere within all this stuff like that. The women's games are in here. Stanford Iowa is right there, or Iowa State is right there. They got the games on there. They doing it right. Do you? I mean, the NBA need to they need to step it the fuck up. No cap. Um, that's not what I came to talk about, though. I'm sorry. I'm rambling. I'm emotional right now. We have the the screen, the foul, the play, whatever you want to say, uh, whatever you want to call it. Hold on, let me pull it up. Man, I am butchering these transitions. Oh, here it is. Aha. Okay. This is it right here. This white screen. Okay. Damn. Okay, somebody got a riff. Come on now. I'm I'm flubbing. It's not working for me right now. All right, all right, all right. Hello, playback. (laughs) Just because when just because (laughs) Wendy and Anthony Edwards get pushed super hard doesn't mean it's not a plethora of other young stars that is that doesn't deserve to be pushed. That's why I feel it's a marketing problem. If you want to sit there and say, oh, Ant and Wimby got pushed like crazy. Yeah, so should have uh, Paolo should have been pushed like crazy. I mean, Reese did have a solid push and then he got hurt, but there's a lot more other players you should be pushing at one time. It shouldn't just be focused. You shouldn't just push two players a year. How B so said, oh yeah, they really were trying to push John fucking Zion. That's whack. Why is it just John Zion? Push everybody. Push all your young stars as much as you can. 24-7. You have an entire league. It's 450 fucking players. I I, not find the screen. I'll just counter argue. I feel like, at least in my head, the reason why you wouldn't do that is because if you push everyone, then you can't focus all that attention on like a concentrated. It's it, you're you're diluting the push, if that makes sense. So instead of making two people mega superstars, and that's what's really helped out the NCAA, you're making like 10, 15 just superstars. If that makes sense. And Which I, I feel like the NBA that, already got right now. And I feel like adding more superstars for the NBA specifically because how big it is, is better. It makes no sense for a league as big as the NBA to just focus on two megastars. It's too big of a league. For the for the women's college basketball, they need that. The eyes and attention wasn't there on the game at all. How Like Omar said to start, niggas was talking about the product was bad. And they weren't even watching the product. Like they needed to have two megastars to draw people in. You don't need that with the NBA anymore. So you don't think the NBA needs a megastar? Because I would probably disagree with that. That's where yeah. I would probably. They can have. Listen, the people will make a megastar. The NBA doesn't have to do it. The people will find someone to gravitate to, and whoever's game and personality propels them to being that megastar, it will be that. The aura will be there. It will do its job. What I'm saying is, 
if you're going to push new guys, you shouldn't just hard push two new guys at a time. That's what I'm saying. The mega stars are in the mega stars or the one B mega stars are in place. They put them guys in place. But the upcoming guys, the next guys, how back in 2015, damn near 10 years ago, it was who's going to be the next guy when LeBron retires and niggas was throwing the Kevin Durant's ADs and shit like that. When you have that conversation, you need to push more guys. More guys need to be pushed. There's no reason why if you have a number one pick that's balling out, he's not getting pushed. That's wild. What was he number one pick for? I disagree. Uh, you you that that one it's or two Steph things Steph. is going to forced it. Steph forced it. Steph forced him to push him. That that one or two things is going to be is always going to hard carry everything. It's always going to carry in any economy, the music industry, uh, the creator industry, or whatever. That one or two is going to be the thing that brings the majority of the eyes to whatever platform or whatever thing we're talking about. Sure, there are some people that are going to help and aid, I guess, along. They're going to be bigger names. But the reason why YouTube has billions of dollars to distribute every single month to the other creators is because Mr. Beast is that guy. Uh, the reason why the NBA transcended the, the two times, like in the 80s and the 90s, is because Larry Bird... Uh, 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 Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and then Michael Jordan. It doesn't Stay matter. Billy, push the game globally. Go ahead. E- even then, going into the next generation, it wasn't okay. Well, let's spread it thin and start talking about all eighty of these guys. It was but hey, they did. We- did they? In the two thousands, that were in the two thousands, it was definitely evenly dispersed. About- maybe the top upper excellence was set in stone. Maybe you had the same five names at the absolute top, but in the two thousands. Talent was dispersed even around the league. You look at all-star games, it's one or two all-stars on damn near representing the entire league. Like, it, it was different in the 2000s. There was nah, a push not, somebody. Like Magic, Bird, Jordan, Sha- uh, Shaq, Kobe, Braun, Curry, slash Katie, if you want to go yeah, there. You're not, talking to, you're not talking – we're not talking about talent being distributed. We're talking about – Who's being marketed? Who's being pushed? What's carried? If you're saying who's being marketed as the best player in the league, fine. I'm just talking about players being marketed as in general to being superstars. I'm not. I wasn't having the mega star conversation. Like I said, I would much rather have a plethora of superstars than having two mega stars. Even then, nobody's ever cared about the plethora of superstars. It's not about all these good. Good. To in the two thousands, they did. That's what I'm saying. In the two thousands, they did. You're talking about talent. On I'm the looking court. at it right now, bro. If Kobe wasn't in those yeah, finals, I, them ratings tanked. It's, 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 it's hard for me to sit there and agree with that because I think Kobe backpacked that one. Because people call Tim Duncan boring right now, and Tim Duncan is like the second guy there. And then Shaq, Shaq prior to was that middle ground between Jordan and uh, Kobe, in my opinion. And then uh, Jordan is fucking Jordan. So I, I think... I think that's the only part where I disagree with your argument. Most of your argument, I'm pretty copacetic with. I don't know exactly where I die on. But um, when it, when the megastars thing, I think megastars are necessary in everything. Like, we have our conversations about the rap game. Yeah, all right, so what's going to happen when uh, Cole, who unfortunately we're going to talk about later, uh, Drake and uh, Kendrick go away? What happens then? Or we have that thing in, uh, I mean, it's even some in other sports and anything like that. It's a common thing. Uh, YouTube even with fucking Mr. Beef, Kai, Kai on Twitch. It, I think everybody needs that guy. Yeah, but right, well, right now in the NBA, aren't there players that are in place to have a megastar push? They already have that. Who? But Luca and Giannis for the first two, in my opinion, that are going to get megastar treatment, especially after LeBron and Curry go down, after they're done, after the, the KDs are done, when those niggas are finally out of here, those are the front runners for being getting the megastar. Why are you saying no? Luca's not. You don't think a nigga like Luca's getting set up to get a mega star push? Are we serious? You should. I think the nigga Luka, in, his, in his second or third year, they were already just, saying, "Oh yeah, this is MVP Luka, year." Wimby, what? And, oh, and and just started to get it, but I, yeah, again, your, your best bet is Luca had, had had the Bucks not sucked this year. Had the had Damian Little not went and sucked the life out the Bucks. I mean, the niggas would have seen it. But even if you want to take Giannis off of there, I would be cool. I don't. I mean. They are pushing that nigga super crazy. Wimby cool and getting himself, but again, still you can name other names. So there's niggas that are in place to get mega star pushes. That that's my point. They have that already. It's not like no one's get no one's is in place to get that push. Nigga, mega you are a fan, and you're telling me that you don't think Luca is in place to get a mega star push. 
Really? Luca, Luca, Wemby, and Tatum if he wins this year. I ain't gonna lie. That's an unpopular one. If Tatum wins right, this year, they are gonna be wins, pushing yeah, the yeah. shit out of Tatum, bro. Yeah, if Tatum wins, Tatum's better than everybody in the league. They're gonna pull that. I just don't. I That's mean, Wemby, Wemby got his logo today, which is a sign that they're ready to set him up for something you know, to get on his next path. But that's still something that has to develop. We should we should be ushering in that. Every every other league, every other time period has been, hey, this guy is ready by the time this guy ends. Patrick Mahomes was ready by the time Brady got up out of here. You understand what I'm saying? Joe Ma- or Pat- uh, Patrick, Tom Brady was coming in. Peyton Manning was coming in when uh, 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 John Elway was coming out. When... Um, Joe Montana was coming out. Like these older players were coming out. This guy was already in. We still, you still talking about? Hey, let's set up for the next guy. Y'all saying these are anomalies? That's perfectly fine. But they manufacture some of this stuff. I'm not talking about talent. I'm talking about push. No, I don't think they're gonna push Luca. I really do think what B Souls is saying. Like Americans have some sort of stigma behind like European players. Gilbert's just saying it kind of out loud. But, yeah. like, we have preconceived notions about these people. I know you probably don't feel that way, Damo. Like, for real, for real. You probably don't. I don't either. Y'all know how I feel about Luca, But I'm talking about the general consensus. That's just the way that people talk. I think there's a lack I of know. relatability when your biggest market is still the U.S. Like, you, you can push a Luca, You can push a Giannis as much as you can. And you'll still succeed with it to a certain degree. But I'm telling you right now, if, if Luca and Giannis were American, we would not be having these conversations whatsoever. It will be concrete who that next guy is. It is con- okay. I'm just who is it? Who is it? it is con- Luca. Are we? Am I fucking retarded or something? Is Luca not set up to be the next guy? Am I bugging? Yeah. I feel no. Crazy. What, what I'm saying yeah, is, it wouldn't even be a conversation. Yeah, yeah. That that's all. If he was American, I, I, I agree with you. Luca is that next like, guy. I agree with you. This is Our crazy. I'm, I'm I'm bugging because Luca is literally being put in place to get a mega star push, and everyone can see the writing on the wall. He's being put in place to get a push, especially since Gunho Morant is doing what he's doing, especially since poor star lover Zion is doing what he's doing. You did not have before. That's the what? problem. You just brought another name out of the box. You had him been saying Ant. You said Ant first. You went a long moment without saying Ant, and then you just said Ant again. So which one is it? Which two guys is really? it? You- I'm, say- I'm not saying it's just two guys. I'm saying there are players in general. I never put a number on how many players it was. I said they are having players put in place to get Megastar pushes. I never put a number on it. Never once did I put a number on it. Where did I say there's always two guys? When did I say that? Because I named three. So oh, rip, I-, I named the first two, and I named Remember more. The what are we doing? We're having. Remember the conversation we're having? You think that there's going to be multiple Megastars in the NBA? Did not say that. Damo did not say that. I will say that. He I never said that. that. Listen, I know he didn't say that, but I said, remember the conversation. Listen, <laughs> listen. I said, remember the conversation we're having. Sage, are we not having a conversation about megastars? I, I could I could say, yes, we were having a conversation about megastars. I could say that. <laughs> not having a conversation about megastars? We are having a conversation about the value of megastars in the league, yes. <laughs> so why the fuck would anybody talk about superstars in a megastar conversation? Because Damo said he would rather have 15, 16 superstars than just two megastars. That, was that the, is why that superstars was, was are brought up in the Beast conversation. Bro. When Beethoven really right. to said it, he said two megastars does more than, for the league than 15 superstars. I then said, well, I would much rather have 15 to 20 superstars. That's literally what I said, and I was arguing from that point of view. Then I brought up the 2000s where there were multiple superstars. Y'all rebuttal with, oh, in the 2000s, viewership was down, Kobe wasn't this, that, and the third. And I can see that. I was like, all right, cool. Megastars, might, megastars may be more important than I'm giving credit for. Therefore, there are players being put in place to be megastars. Niggas asked me who. I said Luca and Giannis. Niggas told me not Giannis. They started naming Wimby and Ant. So then I said Ant. Then I went without saying Ant to say other niggas, and I said Ant again. Now it's a fucking issue that I didn't say Ant every time. I only said Ant once or twice. It's cool, dog. Joe Johnson was in the league and nobody gave a shit. Um, yes. Nobody gives a fuck about Joe Johnson. Nobody gives a fuck about these losers. When yeah, they would if he got pushed. They would if he got a push like that. If niggas really pushed Joe Johnson, maybe it was a different outlook, but he didn't get a push like that. But nobody, but, and nobody will. That's that's part of the problem. Well, one, even, even if they pushed him, I still don't think anybody's going to care about the superstar. Nobody cares about the nigga that's getting the, the fourth seed. Nobody cares about the the fifth seed and you just a great. Nobody cares about that, bro. Do y'all think Not, they even okay. push players or do they kind of wait for like a natural push, organic push without like that's the NBA really doing say. shit? And then they kind of, huh, 
They go, well, yeah, he actually has been good the entire time. Or they just really sliced this shit on first set going. Someone in chat was like, I agree with you, Dom. We'll look at Steph Curry. Steph Curry, I don't count in this conversation because Steph Curry is an example of the NBA even doing what Dama wants it to do. Steph Curry was kind of just in your face shooting 30 footers. You either just accepted that or you didn't. <laughs> like over time, he was like, he's just a shooter. All right. He might be the greatest shooter, but he's still just a shooter. Then the nigga starts dribbling. He's like, I, I, you either accept it or you didn't. But in general, um, if we're talking about the NBA doing their job, then, uh, yeah, I think a lot of the time what the NBA has done uh, recently, not in throughout history, but recently, has been, oh, yeah, see, Jokic can make the finals. Kane, that guy's good. Ah, uh, you see, Luka, Luka can make the WCF and solo squad, the, the Clippers and the Suns. That guy's good type shit. So I, I feel I feel like now they're very um, results-oriented. But in the past, no, nah, the NBA used to just frame one, the chosen one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they used to do shit like that. Yeah, that, that's a, and and mind you, took a lot of bites at it. Just claimed a lot of people were the next Jordan or Jordan Stopper until they got one. Like literally, they would just start calling anybody anything, and we would hate for a couple of years that person would fall off the face of the earth. And then now we're at this point. But you waited so long, and now these dudes don't even care. Like I, I, don't, I really don't think that they care to be any of that stuff that we're trying to make them to be. Like you think that's were. a good or a bad thing? I think it's a bad thing. I think I think a lot of the, the defensive issues, the we don't care about all these different things issues. We don't care about marketing ourselves. We don't care about doing, you know, these commercials or these advertisements, going to these local places and pushing our name. We don't care about um what's it called? Uh, uh, uh we don't care about them calling me anything. We don't care about being a part of these narratives. All these things matter in the grand scheme of getting these casual viewers. So I, I would love to see what the Lakers look like when it's just an Anthony Davis, Austin Reeves type thing. And there's no Steph Curry and there's no Kevin Durant. And we didn't sit here and forcefully push somebody for the past X amount of years. It's going to look real ugly to me, to me. I thought it was a good thing because I thought the problem was we were setting way too high expectations on these draft picks. And then when they didn't meet them, now it's, ah, they're a bust. So I thought it was a net positive, the fact that we aren't setting these high expectations on people anymore, unless they're Zion, unless they're Wemby, which I yeah. do think that's the reason why Cade and Paolo haven't been pushed as much is because we've kind of lowered those expectations in a good way. Yeah, but you care too much about basketball. And ultimately, when Cade starts producing, nobody's going to give a fuck about Cade. We spent the first four years shitting on him. You have Detroit Pistons, like say you said, you have Detroit Pistons fans. I want him off my team. I want to see a Javen Ivy, Ivy led backcourt. Uh, anyway, I got it up. Let's get let's let's keep going. Um, back on to the <laughs> back on to some real hoops, man. Fuck all that other stuff because y'all don't care about it anyway. They're gonna be in the comments. Oh my, you're lying! You're lying! And then go back to not caring about the NBA until we get to the the, the conference finals. Like, stop it. Um, was this a foul? It's one screen. Boom. We just need to know, by definition, what a moving screen is. For context, it is the last seven seconds of the game that's going to send you to the national championship. Uh, <laughs> you know, and this oh. is just going to give you a shot at making or taking a shot. Oh, Was that? Well, oh, well, if that's the case, you don't make that call. <laughs> and I am my turn. <laughs> People are so miserable. To <laughs> if if that's the case, I mean, yeah, you don't make that call. We need all shots is good shots and no shots is bad shots. Don't make that call. I mean, I've always said the main thing I ask for from refs is consistency. And I also maintain the fact that I personally believe refs are inconsistent in the way they call one game over the other. But um, sometimes, man, the, the call is so egregious. You got to make the call. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if you were inconsistent and in not calling it for the first four quarters, but you see that shit and, oh, my God, like, that's a clear legal screen, I'm not mad at them for calling it at that specific moment because the side view, it didn't look like her legs were, like, that wide apart because it was more of, like, it, it had to do with the camera angle. But once you seen the straight shot of how wide her legs were, and how she pushed a little bit, it's like, at that point, oh my god, what what would an illegal screen have to look like for them to call it at that point? Data not found. <laughs> it's an illegal screen. You don't make that call. 
you call a foul on the shot, you call a foul on the drive, or if somebody hits the ground. Other than that, let them play. Yeah, I just didn't understand what fouls you do call, but go ahead, Damo. In real time, I would say yes, it's a foul. In slow time, we'll, oh, I'm guessing you, you would reverse it in slow time. In, in, no, I mean in slow time. I mean it Hell looks yeah. kind of it looks kind of it looks like a bang bang call, slow. But in real time, I can kind of assume she's definitely moving her upper body. There was a slight push, so in real time, without a doubt, I'm calling a foul on that. No, oh, okay. Well, let me give you a. <laughs> Let me provide another angle because the rule I think this is a, a, a part of the problem, too, is that, like, again, people are used to I, I saw on the timeline all this whole this, this conversation of like, oh, you know, you let the players decide refs can't step in right there. You know, you don't have that that call right there. Why is it that you pick and choose when the refs get in there? Why do you want the players to decide if they're clearly fouling? Like, would you let them smack somebody in the face? But it's OK because we're letting the players decide. Like, why would you uh, uh, go along with some BS like that? Are you in it for the entertainment or the integrity of the game? Is is that is that what it is? Because it shouldn't matter what time, what day of the week, you know, who the player is when a foul was had. It should just be, hey, this was a foul. I got to call it because that's what it clearly is. Um, and we got to keep it moving. You know. If I'm tripping, I'm tripping. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But that's that's the way that I see it. Oh, I thought you were about to play something. Oh yeah, I, I mean, I, give me a second, give me a second. But I, I don't know. Am I am I tripping on that? It should be no matter what what's going on. I would say so. Yeah, a foul is a foul. Yeah, a foul is a foul. Especially if it's just that obvious. Like it, it'd be one thing if it's a, uh, like really like because some calls. Refs make it's is is it is it really was it really but that was that was that was pretty obvious, bro. Nope. She was damn near doing a fucking split out there, dog. Like, come on, bro. If, <laughs> if, you can't do that. If my glorious peak ended on a over the back call, I'd be pissed. So no, certain fouls certain fouls matter, and that foul doesn't matter. Now if they make the shot, then I have full authority as the Twitter, as the tweeter. I'm sorry to tweet about the missed call. But you don't make that call. You allow that shot to go up. I hate Sage so much. Let me play it. Let me play it this way so Dom can see it a little bit better. They are in the top left part of the court right here. Top left, upper left. And then also the ref is going to be right behind them. A trip to the title game on the line. Fuel, the drive, five seconds left. Looking for Dangers. Yeah, 100% foul. Disappointing. She slid. Ruined yeah, like you her. <laughs> She literally lifts her arms up into it. Yeah, no, no. Oh, uh, play it back a little bit. No, 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 because I forgot how women set screens for uh, set screens for a sec. Did she extend? She extends, right? Yeah, there's a little bit of extension. I can see why a ref would call that. It's a it's a close play in real time, which people do not consider in terms of ref making calls. They're making that shit a real time call. So niggas miss, niggas might be wrong. Um, but to the naked eye at that moment, especially coming off a double screen, like she set one one way, then set that one that way. Yeah, I will call a foul too. Do you guys now, like footlocker or something? <laughs> Let me say this. There right. is another portion of the rule for the women's game. And no, that's not for the women's game. This is college. Your feet can't even be outside of your shoulders. So yeah, when you yeah, set the screen split. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this shit. Wow. Look at this shit. He shaped like a Dorito, chat. Like, come on. <laughs> nah. It didn't affect anything. And I will never know if it affected anything. Again, when people pay tickets to go to games, they pay to see Paige. They pay to see Caitlin Clark. In Damo's words, they paid to see Iowa. They paid to see South Carolina. All these other teams. They didn't pay to see the ref blow us. And they, like, nobody wants that. All right, so unless Caitlin Clark gets clothesline in the air, let him cook. Yeah. Question though, do, do y'all have a problem with inconsistent foul calling though? Nope. Yes, I do. Because my thing is, if if they weren't calling it the whole game, 
and this is this is a question for for all of y'all. They they weren't like there were a bunch of illegal screens that they did not call throughout the entire game. We know they should be calling these, but in a play like that, that's when they decide to call it. Is that a problem to y'all, or is it on some? Okay, I mean they acknowledge their fucking mistake. Uh, they actually made the change that you wanted, and now when they did, now it's a bad thing. Nope. Inconsistency is a problem, but I'm never going to get mad when you make the call the correct way. And if that is true with the rules where your feet can't exceed your shoulders, I mean, that's the right call. If you make the right call, I don't give a f- I mean, I'm not going to say I don't give a fuck, but it's not like it supersedes everything. You need to be consistent with making that call. That's the second part of it. But at all times, make the call. Yeah, because even like within the flow of an NBA game, let's say Devin Booker gets fouled. And they don't call it. Devin Booker, y'all, y'all would see it in the game. He's going to talk to the referee. Yo, watch out for this next call. Or watch out for this one play. Keep an eye out for it so next time it happens, you call it. So the next time it happens and they actually call it, I wouldn't have a problem with the referee actually making the right call instead of just being consistently inconsistent or consistently wrong for the sake of being consistent. But, but. here's my thing, B-Souls, and you've actually triggered my trap card. Isn't it... Perfectly imperfect hoops. Yeah, it was entertaining. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And my dude, again, I don't think a lot of people know to detail what I'm showing on screen, but this is the rule. A screener must be inbounds and maintain a normal stance with the inside of the screener's feet no wider than shoulder width apart. Section four. The screener, this is what would be called a foul. The screener extends the legs beyond legal width and trips a defender who is attempting to move around the screen. If there, the legal distance is shoulder width apart, if you are outside of that, then at that point you are cooked. Like, I, and and to to ask like shit, they I I hate makeup fouls, I hate makeup calls, um, I I hate bullshit like that. I hate when people don't actually watch the game, the rules, and mind you. That was a revelation to me. So I, I mean, even to 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 I'm mad at myself. But like, when we start to pull out these BS narratives about oh they're favoring one way or they're favoring another way or whatever the case may be, I, I don't when you don't know the rules, like you do not know the rules. Period. Point blank. And that's okay to admit. I you see. didn't play. You didn't play high level basketball. That's cool. I seen some nasty takes about the USC game, and honestly, the UConn. Honestly, all three games, just uh, the the calls favoring uh favoring Iowa, with the fact that they were calling more fouls on the opposing team. But all three but of those teams were just more aggressive than Iowa too. But no, but those people don't know what they're watching. Like when I watch the game, I'm looking at Iowa pretty much, not pretty much, but they don't defend. Like as a team, as a team unit, I think they know. Hey, we really can't afford to get into any sort of. <clears throat> we can't afford to get into any sort of foul trouble at all. So what we're not going to do is we're not going to run out there. We're not going to get handsy with anybody. We're not. We're really not going to play too aggressive. Ain't no need for six two, a uh, six three Hannah Stokey to get aggressive with Carmela Cardosa. She's six seven. You ain't gonna win in no way. But the last thing you need to do is get in foul trouble because we're gonna be stuck. So really, just don't defend. That's why they don't get fouls called on them. I, I'll back that up too. I watch. I watch the games with y'all. Whoever wants to challenge me on that, oh, watch the game with your dumb ass. <laughs> but the reason the reason why that was so ugly is because there were a lot of people who had a lot of uh, a, a hatred towards a Caitlin Clark and an Iowa this weekend, and not necessarily just the regular people, but the Sue Birds of the world, the Diana Taurasi's of the world, the uh, 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 Cheryl Swoops of the world, the Lynette Woodards. Woodward's Woodard's of the world displayed an extreme level of hate different than what I would probably say is a normal level. Like to me, this was just totally blown out of proportion. I don't, I don't know if y'all saw some of that hate too, but this is, there was one specific on the timeline that pissed me off so damn much. I, I had to go, I had to go off about it. And, and I, I definitely want to play that right now. Yeah. I'm not Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you're you know, probably gonna cook the most. But people tried to tell me on my Twitter that she wasn't getting hate on multiple levels, and I was just like, okay, um, I am a hidden figure, but no longer now. Uh, my record was hidden uh, from everyone for 43 years. 43 years. Uh, 
Uh, I don't think, uh, I'll just go ahead and get the elephant out of the room. Uh, I don't think my record has been broken uh, because you can't duplicate what you're not duplicating. And, uh, so unless you come with a men's basketball and a two-point shot, you know. <laughs> accomplished accomplished woman won't won't take it away from her her stats are up there hall of fame basketball hall of fame coach holds the the scoring record for all of collegiate sports but this was before they were organized in the ncaa at 3649 um fuck it i'll go first my problem with something like this is you never had a problem before you never had a problem before when Kelsey Mitchell was coming up on your record, when Kelsey Plum was coming up on your record, you had nothing to say. You didn't come out and say, oh, uh, hey, hey, uh, uh, by the way, uh, 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 my record. <laughs> you didn't have anything to say, Lynette. You really did not. And then the only reason why people even have you out here speaking and why your name is in these algorithms and stuff like that is because Caitlin Clark has broken your record and not just broken the record, but acknowledged you in a way that is very respectful. They invited her out to Iowa when her record was about to be broken. They, they invited her out to Iowa the night the record was broken. And they had her courtside and the coach talked about her and Caitlin Clark talked about her and they said the most favorable things in the damn world about her. Somebody who should not, not, not should not, who wasn't talked about for a long time from all the great coaches, from all the great players that walked before Caitlin Clark. They talked so highly of that woman. It was ridiculous. Some might say glazing. They talk so highly of some some <laughs> some would say they glazed her up <laughs> with with their lady balls. <laughs> um, to me, the AIAW record that Lynette Weddard held um, that was the real one. You know, for some reason, the NCAA does not want to recognize the basketball that was played prior to 1982, and that's wrong. Um, we played basketball back then. They just don't want to recognize it. And that hurts the rest of us that were playing at that time. You know, I mean, there's no reason why that should not be the true record. And, um, you know, at a school like Iowa that has been so rich in AIAW history, um, I just want to make sure we acknowledge Lynette's accomplishments in, in the game of basketball. But congratulations to Caitlin for being the true basketball leader in points tonight you know the ncaa didn't want to recognize women and what they did i don't even care what caitlin got to say i ain't gonna lie they glazed her and when they invited her out to speak or to be a part of that historic moment they had her sitting courtside and what's funny is she even said more favorable things about her she said oh yeah caitlin's great you know records are meant to be broken etc cetera, etc cetera. only to change her mind later on if that is not the clearest sign of somebody got in my ear and told me to hate and this is what's going to get your claim to fame, you sound like a bitter Betty. No different than Diana Taurasi and Sue Bird and even Cheryl Swoops. I, I, I Y'all got to stop. I'm not saying sports has to be kumbaya or hunky-dory, but the hate is fucking disgusting. Stop. Stop. Uh, I'll just say, when it comes to Caitlin Clark, I've seen a level of hate that I haven't seen, honestly, before. I've seen people try to bring up, oh, this is like when Brown was coming to the league. They was talking about him. It's worse than that because the people that was talking about LeBron was simply saying, yeah, there's no way a high schooler is about to just come and and lead us to, to, to the promised land. It was just, the guys that were going to be his teammates. That's who. The people hating on Caitlin are people that are going to be competing against her. The people hating on Caitlyn are people who are just simply watching her play. Imagine if Shaq just hated everybody, not just sinners. That's what everybody's doing to Caitlyn Clark. It's crazy. Imagine if Shaq talked about everybody, how he talks about Dwight Howard. That's how they're talking about Caitlyn Clark, and it's crazy. It's not fair. It's disgusting. It's ugly. It, it screams bitter. 
um from oh why does she deserve the five mil? Why didn't you give it to somebody else? Whack. Why uh, just everything? It, it, it's it's disgusting work. And for that woman to go on there and essentially say my record ain't getting bro- my record ain't been broken because you didn't do it with a men's ball and and, and no three point line. Bitch, shut up. Oh my god, I hate old people. Oh Jesus Christ, I hate old people. Like, just let let the girl live. Let her play ball. She's a phenomenal basketball player and is doing things for the women's game none of you fuckers could do. None of y'all did it. Y'all are all great basketball players. No one gave a fuck about y'all the way they give a fuck about Caitlin Clark. Let's just keep it fucking a hundred. No one gave a fuck about y'all in college the way they give a fuck about Caitlin Clark. And man, man, does that drive you crazy. Fucking Tarasi. I don't even know your fucking first name. Man, does that drive you crazy that you've been playing pro women's ball for as long as you have. It's your big old age of old bitch, and you're hating on Caitlin Clark. I, I seen the tickets that the Mercury got going up for sale now against the Indiana Fever. The yeah. wackest shit I've ever seen. Wackest shit I, with her on drafted. the fucking. That's crazy. Ain't even get drafted yet, <laughs> and they got her front and center. Get your tickets now for Indiana Fever versus the Mercury. Oh, she busts your ass, and when she do, you're the you're the thumbnail, ma'am. You're gonna be the thumbnail of that next pod, and we're doing victory laps. I hope, I hope, hey, Sue, Sue Bird's still playing? Is she retired nah, yet? Nah, no. She, she does the show with Diamond. Sue, I hope you get your ass bust too. I hope, I hope little Caitlyn pull deep from 35 on you old bitches. I, I swear. I'm copping the jersey. That's going to be the first w, WNBA jersey I get, a Caitlyn Clark jersey. Because the level of hate y'all got for her and no other player is crazy. Y'all don't talk about any of the other women like that. Y'all only talk about her like that. That's fucking whack. But to, yeah. to talk about the previous conversation we had though before you go, Sage, this is what I'm talking about with the storylines, bruh. This is what I'm talking about with the story. Just because of all this trash talking going on, I now want to see that first game, on top of her being her debut, but combined with Diana Taurasi talking her shit, I want to see Caitlin Clark bust her ass down on her first game. Hey, man, these are the storylines that the NBA needs. Yeah. I need whoever San Antonio played in, in Wemby's first game to talk that shit before he should he hey, played real, his first game. Real quick, yeah. is the StreamYard shit working um, on playback? I'm going to it, and we're not showing up on there. Um, or, or is that just me? Chat, we good? What you mean? You good to me. What do you I, mean? Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, I pulled playback up on mine, and it's just showing the LKIB logo and nothing else. Like, we're not on the screen. But it's just me then. Fuck you. All right, cool. You should run. Um... Yeah, this I'm is the going. flyer that oh, Damo was talking about right here. The the goat versus the rook 22. Oh, yeah. Um, for me, uh, this goes back to an old conversation that we talked about a while ago. Uh, it's always the old niggas that start it. I said the old niggas are gonna start it, they always do, and then the young niggas overreact. The young niggas potentially can go too far, but the old people always started, and this is another example of that. And then, um, in this situation with Caitlyn, it's unfortunate because hate it or love it, all that this is is she's putting niggas on to the uh, WNBA to women's basketball in its entirety, and of course, to college women's basketball, collegiate women's basketball. Um, it it is what it is. Now, whether that's justified or not to your to your old or your young ass or whatever i say to each his own but a lot of people don't like that it's caitlin clark for whatever reason but to be honest it it would have been whoever for the most part especially if she was a white girl i'm not even gonna sugarcoat it so it's tough it's sad to see um my personal opinion i don't know what caitlin can do to alleviate this hate outside of it's as damo said in an unironic way bust people's ass <laughs> like, like at this point at this point Kaylin just has to go out there and drop people off because it's kind of it's kind of sick to see that the woman who is easily putting in a lot of life into women women's basketball is also the most vilified woman in women's basketball by by um iconic names or by historic names or by veterans of women's basketball. No person who's introduced to it for the most part is really against Caitlin outside of a couple of people that genuinely don't know what they're talking about. But most people who don't like Caitlin Clark have been watching women's basketball and it's tough. It's tough to see considering she's the like you're biting the hand to feed you and it's sad. It's sad. 
You know what's crazy? Not too long ago, I remember being in the locker room and hearing women a part of the WNBA circle talk about the problem is they're pushing the white players more than black ones. Like that was something I heard. Oh, there's plenty of black women that play basketball that are better or that are the actual GOAT, but they're pushing the white women. So now the fact that there are white women hating on this little white girl is crazy to me. It is insane. Sage brought up, oh, she's white. Nigga, she has white women hating on her. Oh, yeah, I, I've yeah. never seen shit like this before. It is disgusting. It's, sad. it's disgusting. It's one thing when they're like, oh, nah, the sisters deserve more love. The white girl getting a little prick. White women are hating on a little white girl. I can't, I, I can't fathom how much hate this is. And I'm and while we're on the subject, I do want to be clear and not even sound raccoony or anything like that because Angel Reese gets um bullshit. Uh one million percent. Angel Reese deals with a lot of bullshit. She's openly talked about it. But it's just so weird that of all the people. You would think Caitlin Clark would be the angel. You would think Caitlin Clark would be the person that like nobody makes fun of, and that's just not the case for anybody that's gonna connect those dots. Mind you, this is a uh, uh, what was Damo saying? I, I I think that they have a. I don't even want to say I think they have because I don't, I don't even want to give them any sort of leeway. the The reason why they hate is because they want to be the reason for the season. Like they want to have their name in the sun. They want to be the thing that propels them. And because your time is no longer here, it is what it is. It didn't happen the way you wanted it to. That's perfectly fine. Part of the problem is too many too many people spend so much time begging for other people's approval without appreciating what's already in their faces. I think that the writing was on the wall for, you know, an upward movement in, like, women's basketball just in general. Like, it's been there for a long time now, a couple years now. Like, I'm, and I'm talking about a historic burst. But... People spent so much time grabbing at other things, talking down on people who were never going to be there for them, uh, caping for, or, or, you know, not caping, but trying to get people who didn't have any interest to, to be interested for so long that now, because you didn't appreciate, you know, what was in front of you, you feel slighted when somebody else is the reason that these people are you know, in there. I see them complaining about all oh, the ESPN missed an opportunity to give, you know, these WNBA players a show and this, that, and the third. That's cool. ESPN disrespected y'all for so long. Create a YouTube channel. Go to ION. Like they've, ION has respected them for years at this point. If you created your YouTube channel, Gilbert Arenas makes $160,000 a month, dog. And that's no, that's no ad deals or no anything like that. Y'all could do it y'all selves. Like I'm a firm believer. That a lot of shit has been proven and will continue to be proven wrong, especially with this stimulus that's going on right now. But stop worrying about people who continue to say the disparaging remarks and all that stuff. Unless you're going to be one of them, then you can join that side. Now, that's that's for Diana Taurasi and Sue Bird and even, even Cheryl Swoops to an extent. Like, If you're going to be on that side, be on that side. You Be a part of the problem. But the other folks, get, get with the times, dog. I guess my only devil's advocate take would be I feel like the reception still has been a major uh, majority positive. Like this may be a case of we're focusing on the the bad apples, but um, like a lot of the coverage around Killing Clark has been positive, even from other WNBA players. So hate always sticks out, unfortunately. Yeah. Has it? Yeah, I mean a you're just not gonna it? see you're just not gonna see it on the timeline because Killing Clark's the goat. Why would you see that? <laughs> She's done a lot for our game. All oh, that, like, why? Why would you see that on the timeline? You're gonna see the people uh, uh, show uh, throwing sneak disses at a award show, but you're not gonna see that. I let me let me play this Diana Taurasi clip because a lot of people have been. Um, it's the clip where they were talking about how she would fare in college, or, or how she would fare going up to the pros, and a, a lot of people thought that that was hate. They're claiming that it is uh, more so, A, this is a message to everybody that Scott Van Pelt was giving out, um, as opposed to a message directed straight at Caitlin Clark. But I'm going to play it and let, and let y'all, you know, give y'all's own opinion. I will say, though, that what, um, that what, uh, um, be so said is true. There, I mean, there are there are people. I do see some ex women players that aren't hating for sure. But when you have that overwhelming majority, you have that overwhelming 
majority. Let me play this snippet, the one that's going to look like it's new. Because you know we got to make her look bad. When the college guys come out, they're waiting for them. I mean, Camilla's coming, Aylin's coming. There's more than just that that are coming. What will the league have in store for them when they get there? Look, SVP, um, <laughs> reality is coming. Okay. <laughs> you know, there's there's <laughs> levels to this thing. And that's just life. We all went through it. Of course. Um, and you see it on the NBA side. It, and you're going to see it on this side where, you know, they, you look superhuman playing against 18 year olds, but you're going to come with some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. Not saying that it's not going to translate because when you're great at what you do, you're just going to get better. But there is going to be a transition period. You're going to have to give yourself some grace as a rookie. And, uh, you know, it might take a little bit longer for some people. Right on. That's perfect. Right. When the college guys come, they felt like that was shade to uh, Miss Clark. That wasn't the strongest shade. That, uh, that that's all I'll say. On that. Yeah, that I wasn't crazy. That, that wasn't, it that wasn't, wasn't crazy. Who you suck, but it was like she said in a tough way. Because on one hand, transition period is just like the most <laughs> basic thing ever. Yes, less to to act like Caitlyn should come into the league exactly the same, if not better, would be like okay, well. You got to show me that, <laughs> but um, on the flip side, um, there was some some remarks like some take more than others. Um, you're gonna find out she kind of laughed it off in a somewhat condescending way. It's just it, it, it's it's cool. Probably tough love more than anything. Wasn't there a clip of them asking like who's who'd you pick number one or who's the better player? And she picked the that's the clip that I thought was like super disrespectful to Caitlyn. Like I guess her reaction or how she answered the question, but that one right there, I mean, that wasn't crazy. That seemed like a a veteran in the pro league talking about a rookie coming into the league. That's how they talk in any league. They talk about they talk about rookies like that in any league going pro. Yeah, you're not about to average thirty eight and eight mm -hmm. in the WNBA type shit. Yeah, like that's that's normal. Ah uh, well. Yeah, that specific play. clip, because I know there's other clips out there, but that specific clip, yeah, I ain't tripping on Now, if she do go out there her rookie year, <laughs> and average 38 <laughs> and 8, you bitches in trouble. Uh-oh. Yeah, so, women someone in trouble. Did make, someone did make the point that the WNBA might be a little different on that front, because, like, number one overall picks come out the gate, all-stars, relatively common, like, MVP candidates relatively commonly, especially mm -hmm. over the last five years. Mm -hmm. Um, Still not as dominant as what they were in college, but... The game translates over a little bit better than the the NBA. Mm -hmm. So I have to look. Yeah, I have to look. Plus, I want to get into hot takes of the week before we move off of college basketball because I got something. But... Sage, give it to me. Ah oh, shit! All right, well, I'll speed run it because we don't really have a debate here outside of the Q and A, but. Hot takes, um, so WrestleMania edition, speed run. First things first, this was the GOAT WrestleMania. Get over it. It was peak. Not going to lie. It was cinema. Stories were built up. Stories were paid off. Both main events were fantastic. Easy, easy peak. Easy peak. No, no, no debates out of that outside of a specific Shawn Michaels Undertaker match that will always die with me. So, uh, second thing, second, if you don't think this was peak, um, w I mean, WrestleMania, not going to lie. I'm going to piss you off even further. The Renaissance era is going to be the best era, without a shadow of a doubt. They're making this shit mainstream. They're calling back to the Attitude Era. People are just cussing on television now. <laughs> they, they do not care anymore. Making babies cry, all that shit. It is going right back to the Attitude Era you loved. And at that point, it's a matter of will you let the Attitude players go. So Renaissance era will also be the peak, let alone if you don't like any of those arguments though, so far. Women's wrestling. Speaking of women's wrestling, Domo hinted to it earlier. I ain't going to lie. Hot take. The women's still cooking. <laughs> the, the women are still dominating. The main events were the main events. They did a fantastic draw up with Seth, Drew, CM Punk, and then obviously the Bloodline. But in general, the women's match is still and still champion right now. And last and certainly not least, just, just to throw a uh, spitball, the next person that's going to hold a world heavyweight championship or WWE championship that the whole world will scream is because it will be his game with everybody saying L.A. Knight. Yeah. The L.A. Knight push is this year. One of you guys can go on for me. Okay. Um, be so. Well, Roman's to go. Well, it's going to be my last CC Dixa clip of the day. But, um, yeah, top 10 influential basketball figure of all time. I'm going all the, all, all the way over there. I think uh, it doesn't really matter what the fuck happens from here on out. I think the impact is there from a player's perspective. 
we got to talk about Allen Iverson, Michael Jordan, um, Steph Curry, Larry Magic. She's in the echelon. Maybe not top five. That top five is crazy. But, you know, you'd have to name probably Oscar Robertson in there. Maybe Dr. J. But after that, I, th I think you'll make a case for CeCe. And my second hot take, that 1B logo is uh, it's mid. Sorry, it's mid. <laughs> Just what? The fuck? <laughs> but, um... Yeah. I actually um, didn't off, off rip, let me see. Okay. Um, Curry... <laughs> This is off the dome, so I'm going to just see if it's the craziest thing or not. Curry, Braun, MJ, Magic, Bird, uh, Harden, PG, uh, KD. Okay. Shaq. PG. Come on. Paul George, yeah. People say Paul George is their goat nowadays. He In terms that. of two-way wings, two-way wings, who you want to play like, who do you want, all that stuff. I'd say people are starting to do that with Paul George. Are, now, are you, you saying wanna... PG is over CC? Is that, is that what you're like? No, I'm, just, their... I'm naming names. I'm naming okay, names. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm about to say. I'm stamping it. <laughs> Dr. Um, J. Dr. J. Debatable. It depends how you care about. Paul George, ABA Paul George or... literally can't be an answer. It's not the craziest take. Not an answer. Oh, I didn't say Kobe. Kobe. I, it's not the craziest take. You probably could kick her out, but it's not the craziest take. There was some. It's not. Was, yeah, okay. Um, let me go. KD, no. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that was so God. crazy. It was kind of crazy. I, I guess. I guess. I'm naming names that I think you can rationally debate, and I think Kevin Durant is definitely one of those. Fingers, fingers. Um, yeah, John Calipari, man, you are a coward. John Coward Pari um, was instrumental for especially like the the 2010s when it came to the one and done era. Uh, but I don't know if y'all saw it after landing a huge contract from Kentucky. He is now apparently going to accept a new contract uh, to be the head coach of the uh, Arkansas Razorbacks. But that's because they have two big funders, one being the uh, heir or owner of the Tyson Foods group, like the one that make the Tyson chicken nuggets. And then apparently, uh, I think it was one of the Waltons is also a part of this group because that way, uh, you know, what my side of the timeline is surmised is that he can put together some of the best NIL valuation for these players to come to his school because he can't recruit off of other things that probably matter in a child's life. Um, you are a coward. You are no different to me than Nick Saban. Uh, actually, you might be worse than Nick Saban. I'll give Nick Saban the pass because he was older. So him retiring because he couldn't keep up in the NIL era, you know, he's old. He probably just needs to sit it down anyway. He don't got that much life left to live. You, my friend, are a younger person. So it is disgusting to me that you have just said, hey, man, since like, I think it's like the past nine years, no Final Four appearances. I think a singular Elite Eight appearance, um, you know, no 35 win seasons. Um, he's been not not mid. He's been like worse than mid as a coach in a lot of these seasons. As far as coaching on the court goes, he's terrible, too. So you are a coward because you had to run to the place where you can get the big money to try to get the big name players, uh, which ultimately I hope does not work out for you. And I'm pretty sure it will not work out for you if you just compile a bunch of big name talents. But, you know, you can just say you did it just to do it. Ain't John Calipari old, though? Not as old as Nick Saban. He's a coward. Nick 72. John He's a coward but... because the landscape of recruiting and the landscape of college basketball change, and he's just – Adapting with the change that makes him a coward. Yeah, he was never he was never in it for actually coaching. He could he could never actually keep up in that regards. Uh, if he could, he would have stayed at a place that still had some cachet and still had a pretty good uh, 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 you know alumni fan base or alumni base. They could still put up a lot of money, but you had to go somewhere where you could put up even more money uh, to try to put together teams because you can't recruit. You can't you 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 can't compete. You should be able to you should be able to recruit without the NIL stuff. I just seen Don Staley do it. I, I don't I don't want to hear that bullshit. They lost five starters and, and was able to come back and win the national title. I don't I don't want to hear that. You I feel suck. like it's a difference between the men's and women's college game in terms of recruiting, especially how especially when it comes to the transfer portal, how quick niggas are to transfer. But even with that, 
That's not true. We go through. I mean, I maybe I, I don't know what you value in terms of what is important to a college coach. I would say a obviously winning national championships, but b producing pros, especially when you're known as the one and done coach. Producing pros, you can't name me two other coaches that are more decorated in producing pro basketball players than John Calipari. He's in the last ten years, in the ten plus years, last fourteen years, he has produced maybe the most NBA players, and he might have produced the especially guards in the last de- the last decade. Oh my God, the Kentucky guards are running the league in terms of like I I don't know how it's cowardly that he's now going somewhere where he can now throw more money at niggas to probably try to go win because he hasn't been doing it. You can call him a trash coach, that's fine, but to call him a coward when I, again winning a natty. Number one, a lot of niggas' books. Producing pros is the second thing that you want from a college coach, and he does his fucking job. I don't think that that's necessarily inherently the case. One, there's not too much of a major difference in the way that the transfer portal works in, like, the men's and women's games. They all transfer at this point. Like, it is what it is, except for out of South Carolina. Uh, when you have a real coach, you should be able to do all it. Was you you fix your face? Well, go ahead. I mean, in the last, the last couple of years, I haven't heard of – highly touted women basketball players transfer for real like a lot of them in abundance like it is for the men's side i haven't heard of it for do you follow follow, like any news outlet that would feed you any women's basketball on my my timeline i will get an update about who's transferring yeah i follow college sites that give that type of news so i'm saying i'm not saying none of them i'm saying as much as the men's game that that is what let me let me let me set the table I don't feel like in the women's game, they are transferring at the rate that the men are transferring, especially the upper end talent, the higher echelon of talent. Are yeah, they? I, the, the, the third leading scorer this year, like as far as average, is just into the transfer portal today. So I would again ask Whoa. you, I mean, Deja Kelly at UNC, we could go down this list of names. In the, last, in the last two, three years, in terms of the elite talent, are they transferring at the rate like the men? Because that's yes. what I'm saying. I'm not saying they're not doing it. I'm saying the men are probably doing it more. At least yes. from what I've seen. Damo, yes, you just aren't following these people. Especially especially with this being like, I'm surprised you said that, especially with like today happening. Like This is like one of the last days where people can either declare or uh, uh, transfer you know, out of, out of your school or whatever, or say what your plans are before like the draft deadline and stuff like that comes to pass. So, I mean, if that's the way you feel, that's fine. I would, again, just challenge. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying, Cruz. The upper excellent talent in for the men's side, more of them are willing to transfer and are transferring compared to the upper excellent talent for the women. At least from what I've seen. If I'm wrong, fuck it, I'm wrong. I'm just going from what I've seen. I'm not saying women don't transfer, but in terms of that top-end elite talent, they're not transferring at the rate that the men are. And also, who is that? Who are you even talking about? Because when they just, de- if we're talking about the top echelon, they would just declare for the draft. What are you talking about? I might be mistaken there too. I mean, that's not absolutely true, but who? who? I'm asking you who. You ask me who. I'm asking you who. For me personally, I mean, the top one, Grant Nelson. For me last year, Grant Nelson going out of North Dakota State to go to Alabama to play better. That would be my first one. That would be the first name I get. North Dakota are State. You- Give me another one. Give me another. He trans- one. He- I said. Upper excellent talent, the player Grant Nelson is Grant Nelson not a talented player? Another one, please, another one, please. Caleb Love. Okay, another one. I gave you two off the top of I my head. You, um, off the top of my head. Go ahead. Did you give me four? Yes. I don't I remember you giving me four. four. I heard. Okay, cool. That's the two I can give you off the top of my head. Okay. Um. Yeah. No. I, I think I think he's a coward because he knows that he can't offer the stuff that would get people to build a program and if you value i guess the giving the kids the nil deal or whatever the case may be then that would be perfectly fine but to me that's not what your job is your job is to win games for the program your job is to have something that the people will buy tickets for and somebody might uh uh, agree that oh well the names year in and year out will get you there but you did that already so what's the difference here versus there I, i don't even think what he's about to transfer for is more money um, I not transfer for. I don't. I don't think what he's about to take the coaching job for is more money, is because he's running from the grind of providing real, actual basketball training, real, actual coaching, and building a program. I think he's running from the grind. 
build a program. I don't, think I don't think he's running from a grind. He did build a program for over a decade now of one and, one and done coach. Yeah, it was a different era. So now he is adjusting to what the landscape of college basketball is now, which is is being spearheaded by NIL deals. His goal, I'm pretty sure, will still be the same of producing pros. That is what he's going to lead with. I will assume that's what he's going to lead with, the transfers. Or the transfers or these guys he's recruiting. He's going to throw money at them and tell them, Throw money and with the promise of I can make you a pro. Look at my resume. That is literally Calipari's thing. His, his thing is producing pros. I would say for Calipari, him recruiting, a bigger point is him getting you to be a pro versus winning a daddy. Especially what about his sport. program makes it makes you feel like it's weak? Specifically. Oh, outside outside of the fact that they haven't won a natty. Because I feel like that's so like outcome driven. Uh I mean, most things are outcome driven, but him him not being able to even win games, fuck a fuck a natty. We're talking about from top to bottom because I know one team wins a natty. Uh, we're talking about winning games at a level that he once was able to. Something clearly happened: his lack of being able to coach or adjust versus the competition, uh, and then him not being able to adjust in that regards. If we're talking about people going to figure out ways to become pros, I think people will quickly understand that hey, he isn't the he isn't the end all be all in that conversation. When it comes to doing that, there's probably more name recognition than that either way. Um, dang, I'm trying to find the 2022 roster or the, the one from this year to prove a point. Because I want to see if he's really producing pros anymore like that. I can't necessarily say to that point. I think in the past, yeah, what you're saying is perfectly fine, Damo. It was, hey, if you want to produce pros, go here. Like, this is going to be your thing. But I don't know if that's necessarily, like, the case anymore. And then also... Producing a pro versus the longevity is another argument. Last year, he had five, four people, one, two, three. And I think some of these people even transferred in uh, to the school. So that's four people right there. None of them are like anything long lasting at all. Tata Washington can't find a place. Oscar Tashibi, I think he has like a little spot. Jacob Toppin. Yeah, if his claim to fame is like, yo, I can get you in the pros, that's that's a different conversation than I can keep you in the pros. And I think there are other organizations that could probably keep you in the pros, but I hear you. I mean, I still, that was a for one and done thing is producing a pro. I mean, that was, yeah, we're done that with that. Thing. We're done with that, though. That's what I'm saying. We're done with that. Are we? You don't think we're out are of the we? one and done era and we're in the NIL era? No. No, it, even in the NIL era, you can you're still gonna get a bunch of one and dones. Like, what are we talking about? But that doesn't mean that you're still in the one and done eras because one and done. If still in the good. okay, so it would depend on how many players are drafted that are only doing one year of college. And if we go back and look at this last year, and there's no way of me telling how long these niggas have been in college, but a lot of these names are still one and done players. Like you're still like so again until you start seeing NBA teams drafting uh, older guys, drafting guys that have been in college longer, college system longer, or you have players that are just refusing to leave college compared to the past era. I mean, just because niggas got money now don't mean it's not a one and done era still. Like, you're still not doing one and dones. Now, let me ask you, looking forward, do you not think that'll be true? People are going to stay in college more. They're going to be less one and dones because of skill development. I could probably tell you who was in, the one and done. In, 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 in theory, in theory, that makes sense on paper, but in reality... Niggas still dream of going to the NBA. A lot of people, there are people who dream of just having money for their family, but there are still people who have the dream of playing professional basketball, playing basketball in the NBA, being an NBA basketball player. That's still a dream. I understand that too. I think going forward, there's going to be a lot less of the one and done. So who can really build a program? Especially if that means you're going to have longer longevity in the league. I think right now we're seeing a, a resurgence of like older players who have more NBA ready skills because they've honed them in a college system. We're seeing those players uh, stay in the league longer, make bigger impacts faster. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the top ten from last year's draft. Outside of the guys that came in from overseas or a different system, it's one and done these. Brandon Sorry. Miller, Brandon Miller, one and done. Anthony Black, one and done. Jairus Walker, was he not one and done? Taylor Hendricks, was he not one and done? Kaysen Wallace, was Kaysen Wallace one and done? Some of these things I'm genuinely asking. Genuinely, I'm asking some of these names, oh, I mean, but I, I can other ones. You. I'm not saying other ones. Like, I want you to call. I can. I, I know Brandon's one and done. I know he's one and done. I know Anthony Black's one and done. Was Jarris one and done? Jarris uh, done. Uh, look, Anthony mm -hmm. Black. All these people. So I'm at the top ten right now. Besides mm -hmm. Wimby, all of those kids are one and done. And Jet Howard's one and done. 
how many of these people are making impact and how many of these people are staying in the league? How many of these people are making – I mean, Anthony Black's making impact. Jairus Walker hasn't got a shot yet. Taylor Hendricks, bottom of the barrel – I mean, not bottom of the barrel, but bottom of the rotation, not making an impact yet. Fine. Casey Wallace making an impact. Jet Howard, not. Derek Lively, he is. And is he a one and done? Yeah, he is. Casey Wallace. Casey Wallace is getting rotational minutes for a playoff team, yes. No, you all the way. No, no, no. no. Not, not on the Pistons, on the Thunder. Casey Wallace is 10. What you call it? Derek Lively is 12. He's, he, he's playing a big part. On the Mavericks, who are a playoff team, Grady Dick. He's not saying that the uh, Raptors are a playoff team, but he's getting minutes. Uh, Jordan Hawkins. Let me see. He's twenty-one, so he might have stayed for. He might be an older player because he's twenty-one now. Um, so I don't think he would count. Kobe Buffkin. I know he's not playing, so it doesn't matter if he's one or done or not. So he's not getting the real opportunity. But Keontae George. Keontae George, another one and done. He's getting heavy minutes for Utah all year. Uh, was B B Pods was the older player? Yeah, he stayed in college longer. Cam Whitmore, one and done guy, getting heavy. Uh, div- got into a situation where he got heavy minutes with the Rockets, who were trying to push for the playoffs but didn't. Marcus Salzer, rotation guy for the Pistons. Oh, he's an older player. Never mind. He's a he's a one. He's not a one and done guy. But I'm just saying, guys that are getting guys that are getting heavy minutes, guys that are in the league, rotation players, starters, whatever it is. One and done, guys. And again, I would ask who's making more impact in the league. I would, I would have an argument for them. But again, it's, it's not necessarily. We're not talking about one or two things. We're not talking about one or two years after things are implemented. This is a longer trajectory, and we're talking about in the the longer game. I think mm-hmm. the older guys are going to have more effect in the league. We're seeing that there's a, a resurgence of hey, we're going to take a chance on an older, more established guy. And then also, there's going to be more value with staying in college. Where's the resurgence of that? We're going to take the older, more established guy. Where's the resurgence? Who are some of the best? Who are some of the best for uh, 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 rookies this year? All mm-hmm. young guys, and then you have uh, Hami Hawkins, who's an older guy, and B Pods, who's an older guy. Outside of that, it's younger guys, one and done guys. The Thompson mm-hmm. Twins, Wimby, Brandon Miller, one and done guys, yeah. or young guys in general. But uh, again, for it to be a resurgence, it has to Chet, who again he was one and done guy. Um, if it's a resurgence, that means it's an abundance of people. It, it, it would be like more, especially in the lottery, it would be more people being picked in the lottery that are older. That's when we have a resurgence. But if we're talking, if, if we're, if you're saying a resurgence, teams are choosing to go with older guys over a younger guy because of their development. It will be a real test of that if they are doing that in the lottery. That will really show it. Not, not doing it at the end of the first round. They've been not doing that. Not necessarily They've been that would be the next step play. up. But again, a guy like Hami Hakez, in my opinion, wouldn't even get a look because of age and lack of athleticism. But not that's true. Not I guess so, Damo, if you feel that way. I mean, it's a, it's a regular thing for guys at the end of the first round to be older when they get drafted. That, it's a normal thing. But again, or in the second round, that that's always that know, the thing. From the small that I know about Hami Hakez's career, knowing knowing Hami Hakez. Is a guy that wouldn't even be looked at. That's an undrafted guy. That's like a guy that we wouldn't even be talking about seriously. If you feel differently, that's fine. We can that's have a true. difference of opinion. If, yeah, if you feel different, I mean, I mean, I mean, that's just not true. But okay, I mean, college basketball at all? What are you talking about? I'm just saying, uh, in previous NBA drafts, like older, older college players who have played more years typically go in the middle to second round. I mean, it's a I don't need thing. to. I don't need to watch college to know I'm that. Seeing what I'm saying. Jaime Hawkins as a player from the, the, the prospect that he is, is somebody that's not getting looked at in previous drafts. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you are wrong. But okay. If you disagree, that's fine. Bezos, who doesn't watch college basketball, I no disrespect. I'm not hearing that from Bezos. I'm I don't know in what world is a guy getting drafted. At the seventh, at the eighteenth pick in the first round, that would have that's considered undrafted player. That's just not no, and, and no. He had the talent in college. He had the talent to be an NBA player. Now, where he would get drafted was definitely a question, but it was no question that he'll be drafted. What? What? If you felt like he had the talent in college, that's perfectly fine. I don't feel like he had the talent in college, but that's just me. Okay. Yeah, that's not a athletic guy who was putting up a lot of numbers and a meaningful and a meaningful I mean, conference and all that stuff. I mean, like we, that. We, we've, we've seen, we've seen a, it's a couple of cases in the last couple of years and we can go back and find more guys who 
didn't put up a lot, put up the greatest numbers. And we've had this conversation before. Didn't put up the greatest numbers in college, but they had NBA tools. That, from an, that's older, normal an older guy, from an older guy. You would take that from a younger guy. Well, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say what you call it from an older. What was his numbers? In, am I misremembering how many college numbers? I, I know they weren't blown out the water. We the nation, but the average 18. Man, we got to move on. Um, Sage or Dama, what should I think? Easy. Um, Listen, man. My guy Cole saying sorry isn't crazy. Isn't the craziest thing in the world. It shouldn't have the streets in the uproar. The streets shouldn't be on fire. Niggas shouldn't be jumping off bridges and buildings. Niggas shouldn't be ready to burn crosses and raise pitchforks because it didn't sit right with him to fake beef. Um, I know niggas in real life who can't fake beef. I know people in real life who genuinely avoid confrontation. They're like, you know what? I'm not with the confrontation. Fuck it. I know people like that. It is not crazy for somebody to get goaded in to, you know, some shit that they really don't want to do, but they're doing it for public perception. It's not crazy at all. Um, and I will say this can come, this can come from me having a J Cole bias. I said it in my space earlier. If Kendrick was the one that apologized, I would be just like everybody else running my victory laps calling the Knicks off. So I, I can understand that. But because I have allegiance to the side of the nigga who did apologize, I can take the mature step back and see it wasn't crazy. I'll Definitely. say this as a J. Cole fan. First things first, um, he called it might delete later, and it's J. Cole. This is not shocking to me. It's just something that I did not wish to happen. 20% odds and a 20% 20 hit. That's two. I'm going to be honest. I think this is a simple case of as a human, I think you I think few people don't see, find it hard to see as a human, especially if J. Cole and Kendrick truly were friends, which I assume they were. And they just had a little argument. The argument is public. And now he don't want to go this far, this far as a human. People are for that. But as as like a fan, as a person that views this as entertainment, is it disappointing? Duh. Hey, beyond a shadow of a doubt, hell, I'm a Cole fan, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm I'm not happy about it, <laughs> not not even remotely. It's very, it was very tough because it's like, damn. And and mind you, I think that I, I've been looking for the album. I've been looking for the album for all these years. I wasn't looking for a beef, but I ain't gonna lie, the beef could have cooked too. So it's just unfortunate that um. Now my dog gonna have to get cooked. My glorious king is going to have to get dragged through the mud. And he kind of like he, he deserves it in that way because it's like you, you know what industry you are, you know what um the community is, you know what you know, you know your fans. But ultimately, do I care in the sense of like him uh actually making this decision? Do I want to say that Jay Cole's entire discography is now ass, all that stuff? No, the only thing that I will take as a joke now, admittingly, is he has a lot of bars that he'll talk about. Yo, if someone takes a shot, I ain't gonna lie, I'm fucking niggas up, not Kendrick. So, so, that's, so that's that's tough, bro. But outside of that, it is what it is, man. Great guy, great music guy. Makes great music. He just he just lost. I mean, that was my main takeaway. <laughs> I mean, we, we we in a battle right now. You wave the white flag. Wee wee. Yeah, I'm out of here, coach. Man, does this uh take him out of the big three conversations? I think this should be an easy answer. No. Musically, discography wise, no. Him waving the white flag. This take him out of number one. I, I, I said that. I'm like, all right, I can I can Wait. see niggas not having a one. I won't Wait, argue one no more. What was the question? I ain't gonna lie. For does this the, does this take him out the big three conversation? Oh my god, yeah, bore, boredom. <laughs> you know, you know what? No, e that even even peak peak boredom because who do you replace him with? Twenty one Savage. I ain't gonna lie. It's funny the names like when niggas like all right, Cole's off the big three. Who's in the names they try to rebuttal with? Is like future. yeah, this, this is why he's not a lyrical, spherical future. Future is my pastor. Let me be very yeah. clear. J Cole is my glorious king, and future is my pastor. Why does Back why why does the third have to be lyrical, miracle, spiritual? That's been like the theme with the big three. Has it? Oh, with this big three? Yeah, in the I'm sense of like. Drake, Kendrick, and J. Cole, am I high? What's, um, no, no, no. I think I do think you're high because what's lyrical about Drake? Drake's not a lyrical artist. Drake doesn't have lyrics. I don't think he's. I, no. 
I do think Drake has some songs with bars. I do think Drake can rap. I don't think Drake is a lyrical rapper. No, I, I don't. Y'all got it. You think Drake's a lyrical rapper? Y'all nigga, what else did I wake up on today? Why are so many niggas telling me Drake's a lyrical rapper? When, when did this happen? Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Because especially in the past couple of years, Drake hasn't been lyrical, miracle, spiritual, right? You would agree, right? Yeah, for sure. He's been he's been a hop one. But the thing, the frustrating thing about Drake's music lately has been that rather than making Drake music, he's been trying to make everybody else's music. Okay, that's fine. However, you feel, you agree that he hasn't been lyrical, miracle, spiritual. Tell for me, the most part, no. All right, cool. Tell me why he doesn't then move out. Like the minute that you get out of miracle, lyrical, spiritual conversations, because he still it? has. It's not like the ability's gone. That's why a lot of these things are seen as are disappointing. Sure? Yeah. When has he been lyrical? When when was the time Charlotte he wasn't a, a, a lyrical? And that's what I hate when you niggas pr- pull up one song and be like, Drake "See, he's a lyrical song. rapper." Let me let me and ain't let even me, Charlotte. Like, let me right, ask. Right. I do want to ask you a question. You saying you saying that the ability's not gone? How long do you go before you say, "Oh man, maybe the ability is gone"? Huh? Shit's crazy. Cause there's se- there's several there's several times Drake will drop a track uh uh even a somewhat projects on somewhat of a collection of songs on an album and you're like oh sh- that guy's still good but then he'll continuously do some I don't know Afro beat shit and then he'll do five beat switches on something else and then he'll try to I uh, he'll just do some bullshit but but ultimately do I think that Drake is a a person that if I asked Drake to rap that he couldn't do it. Right. No. You're almost there. So then, all right, that raises two questions. It raises two That's questions. Right. I guess this is an interview. Continue. I don't think that you would probably say somebody who has a W shooting night, like they have one good shooting night, you wouldn't just say that they're still a, a good shooter, right? Drake's, like Drake's still better than 90% of the rap game. A bad Drake album in like a bad 90% of the rap game no, is listen, not listen, listen, listen. I don't think if Giannis goes like, Six for seven from three. You don't all of a sudden say, "Man, this guy's in the shooting conversation." Man, we got to have a conversation about Giannis. I'm just high. And wait, wait, no, 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 no. Can I ask? Can I? I'm just wait, wait, high. Wait, I'm just high. Can can I'm just high. Can 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 Here we go. We done with the questions. We done with the questions. It's never just the questions. Decline. Because nigga, 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 niggas is doing. Stay the ground, Sage. I'm with you, bro. Y'all doing y'all right now. Y'all doing y'all right. No, I didn't want to know. Because you said he's better than ninety percent of the rap game. And again. At being lyrical, he's lyrically better than ninety percent of the rap game stage. Drake, Drake, Drake is a very lyric, good lyrical artist. Yes, for sure. He's better than ninety. Like you are sucking me game off. Game. Eat dick, bro. Of like mainstream right. motherfuckers. Yeah. Of mainstream niggas, he's better than ninety yes. percent of mainstream niggas. Yes. Of mainstream artists. Yes. You know it's crazy, but you know how many? Crazy. How many? Y'all, oh, y'all, yeah, and, and it's and it's ironic that y'all have these stances, but then there's literal pod episodes of you guys pandering on who would replace Drake. There's literal pod episodes of you guys sitting there talking about, damn, all these niggas do the same thing. But then we're on today's episode because of the Kiki's and the Ha Ha's, and now Drake can't rap. Y'all, y'all. No one said Drake can't rap. No one took it that far. Funny, That's what's crazy. No, because I did a space no, earlier, and it was a bunch of niggas with OVO soldiers in a fucking bio on my stage trying to tell me about Drake. And because I'm not saying Drake is top 10 as a lyricist of mainstream rappers, now I'm saying he can't rap. No, Drake can rap. I've been on record saying, nah, Drake know how to rap. Drake has an okay pen, even though we can question when he's using his pen. Drake pen is okay. But in terms of lyricists, when did we just get to the world where Drake is one of the better lyricists in rap? That's new to me. That's just new. That's new territory. I've never, I've never heard that one. I, I knew because the mainstream success, you mean be able clears, to sell. Clears, Ice Spice clears. Um, who else? Future clears. No, I guess, no, no, no. guess these artists are just better wanna, lyricists than Drake. Say, I want to say this is this is so funny to me because they all of a sudden I don't I don't know when I don't know if the youth decided it. Why did uh why did Jay Z move out of this conversation? Why is he it's not, not the same generation? That's what matters. That's 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 actually where the this big three came from. Yes, because otherwise it would be like Jay Z. Yes, yes, that's exactly that's exactly what matters. Yes, precisely, um, <laughs> precisely. Again, right. if I'm fucking high, then I'm fucking high. But that's no, precisely I mean, the conversation. Mind you, I think doing, the, bro? 
he established this whole big three. Is a better lyricist. I thought I thought the big three was a hit making horror. It's not the best music conversation. But he's bored. No, no. I thought I thought I thought they established. I thought people established this big three conversation around the time that Jay Z was still dropping music. So it's kind of like saying, "Yeah, bro, I, I, I'm the go to this shit. I'm the go to this shit while still being in the league with Michael Jordan." How you just decide because you in your early twenties and then he in his late or, or mid to late thirties that you just become the goat when the goat is still right there? Like, how does that make sense? So I don't think that's what it is. So who are y'all replacing? What is y'all big three then? Jay Z is one. So, but see, that's the know. thing. You're saying when you Omar, when you're saying the big three, you're saying of all time. When these Man. niggas are saying the big three, I don't think they're talking about of all time. I think they're talking about niggas now. I think they're talking about I'm of the not, current oh, era. Oh, oh, let me let me be clear. I'm not even necessarily talking about of all time because the big three would still have the conversations of a- adding Biggie and Tupac and all these other people. People would say that. At the time that the big three was established, oh, it's, it's, it's us three. We're at the top of this rap shit. Jay-Z was still dropping projects, Right. That nigga dropped one project. In, what, didn't when was the big three established to you? I'm not Kendrick say, Cole and, and Drake. Let me let me say this. Damn came out in 2017. It had to be in that realm, right? And Jay Z. I'm about to say between 20, 2013, between 2013 and 17. And Jay Z was dropping. So his how, retirement how, album. Am I tripping? He was still. He dropped the last album was 2017. Mm-hmm. Even then, I should not compete. But hey, what you talking about? I don't. I mean, I don't. When when he dropped that shit, when he dropped that, and we're talking about yeah, four for four. When he dropped four for four, um, <laughs> the conversation, at least in my circles, was it? Oh yeah, Jay still in this shit. It was. Hey man, them, <laughs> rapping about Peyton's is cool. Hey man, that old nigga. He, hey, he 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 still spit a little bit. But niggas was not putting him in big three conversations in 2017. That That's just wasn't right. your your circle listens to Lil Peep. So I'm not necessarily worried about No, my circle, circle doesn't. My circle doesn't listen to Lil Peep. You were literally listening to Caribou earlier in the stream. Like I, I that doesn't mean my circle listens to that because I enjoy certain music. That doesn't mean that's what my circle you're listens to. Listening to Caribou as well. What happened? They think you're crazy for listening to Caribou? Yes. Oh well, that's crazy. I don't, but, I, I don't, I don't use other niggas to validate my music. I use my ears to validate my music. What the fuck? I listen to what I like. Oh well, if that's the case, oh, you don't like Drake. So you, don't, you don't like Drake. I so didn't say like I don't like Drake. Never said I don't like Drake. Drake's my top five all time. Ultimately, there's nothing that you can necessarily point to besides your specific ears that says Jay Z wouldn't be in this conversation if we're talking about a 2017 metric. That thing sold still. It was talked about culturally still. It was culturally relevant. Like all the things, it sounded good. He was still rapping on it. I don't know why you would say that he isn't a part of the big three in that conversation in 2017. He wasn't wasn't currently consistently dropping enough to be considered somebody still in rap. Wait, so why would Kendrick be? Hey, good fucking question. I've been asking the same shit. I've been asking the same shit. You, you right. Why do niggas consider Kendrick still? You're right. Didn't, in 2017, bro, I swear we just or now. Talking. Well, I'm saying that now, but in 2017, Kendrick oh. had a case. Kendrick had a case in 2017. He dropped in 2017. Jay dropped in 2017, and then it took Kendrick until 2022. So I, I don't know. When how did Kendrick that, drop before that? When did Kendrick drop before 2017? Yeah, right, this is the in 2012? Yeah, in 2011, right? Yeah, in 2011. Mm-hmm. And then before that, 09, 09, cool, 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 cool. I don't know Carter. If y'all feel the way that you can just, hey, we'll X him out in this conversation because it is. Ultimately, the nigga Cole bowed out of a, a rap beef, uh, one in which Kendrick would say that he started. Uh, I think that makes you pussy. So maybe we take like like Rashard McCann said, I'm taking MJ out of the conversation. If niggas want to take Jay Z out of the conversation, that's totally fine. Uh, but he's been out of the conversation. I he's not. In the, there's it no was, way Jay Z. So Omar, when did he it, leave it the wasn't conversation? His conversation. <laughs> It when, wasn't when his combo to be. Yeah, yeah, Because you know I'm, I'm assuming you still don't have it in your big three. Unless you do. Unless you do. No, you know what's crazy? I, I have a thing. Apparently, you can, I believe you can retire from rap. I believe that you can get out of the rap game if you're not consistent enough for what I would consider like a three-year a, a three year gap between releases is probably like too much. Three to four-year gap is probably too much. You're probably out of the rap game at that point. 
but mm-hmm. they still had Kendrick in the big three between 2017 and 2020 slash 2021. So I don't know, B Souls. I believe that. There's a lot of niggas that believe you can't retire out of the rap game. You dropped the Black Panther album, 2018. I see ability to make rap. Music. Okay, brother. <laughs> I heard what B Souls just said, right? He dropped. Yeah, the- I did. I'm not. I didn't. <laughs> hey, he's his own man. I'm my own man, bro. <laughs> oh, God is a troll. God damn, bro. Nah, nah. I know you're. I trolling, feel like a nigga like Jay is in the all time. He's in an all time conversation, but the big three conversation. And Sage, correct me if I'm wrong, but the big three conversation was always a conversation about niggas who were perceived as current rappers running the rap game at that yeah. time in 2017 jay, even though he dropped a successful album omar jay-z was not considered someone who was currently leading rap he wasn't no, i you don't you don't have to yell at me about that because i agree with you that that was the perception what i'm saying is it's weird to come in and say yeah i'm the goat i'm the goat i'm the goat and Michael Jordan is right behind you. And Michael Jackson is yeah, right behind you. Yeah, not playing. No, no, yeah, no. the niggas are watching the games. No, no, still playing. Still actively making music. Yeah, yeah, in the big three. They're still playing in the big three, buddy. Congratulations. That's like no. LeBron in 2017-18 being like, yeah, nigga, I'm going to go to basketball. While Jordan lacing them up in the big three. That's what, what it's like. What, what did Jay-Z drop, what did Jay-Z drop in 2013? In 2013? Yeah, you said it started in 2013. Carter. Magna Carta. I said between 2014 to 2018. Said, no, 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 Damo. Damo, I was... Did I say 2013? Then the Magna so, Carta. The Magna, Magna Carta. Magna if, Carta. If we feel like, and mind you, that would be a crazy... I mean, that's that's the fall from grace because it might be some bangers, but if we feel like uh, uh, Magna Carta is the equivalent of like the big three or Washington era Jordan, then I guess. But I don't believe so. I'm saying that he wasn't currently in in the conversation. Even him himself... Wouldn't have said he's a current rapper. He stopped addressing himself as a rapper around that time. Yes! What? We're not about to. Now we're about to say Jay Z stopped. He didn't stop addressing himself as a rapper. All right. I'm cool. a rapper, but I'm continuing cool. to rap. All cool. right. Buddy. Wait, you All said right. it took a three to four year gap to say you're out of the game, right? That's what you said? Yeah, Omar? I think so. Yeah, three or four. So from the gap from 2013 to 2017, he, he was already out. Am I tripping? He dropped fourth year. Oh my god. Hey, 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 hey. So the clock just reset. <laughs> okay. It is double back and then double back with an album with his wife. So I don't know, man. Yeah, the clock. Oh, oh I yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, the clock does reset. The clock does reset. Okay. Okay. So, we would have to we'd have to keep it consistent for Kendrick. We would have to. So Kendrick dropping Mr. Morales and the big steppers would allow that clock to reset, would it not? 17 to 18, 18 to 19, 19 to 20, 20 to 21. That's four. Okay. And then 22, 22. That's on the fifth year. At that fourth year, hey, you done. <laughs> oh my! You you unretired. You unretired. You dropped an album. I'm cool with that. I'm. I have no problems with that at all. You hop back into the game. And that's why we got to count the Black Panther album. Yep. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. Yeah. Boo! 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 Still in the big three, y'all. Huh? Still in the big three, y'all. Huh? Uh, I just by didn't the think way, being a the, lyrical guy was a requirement to be in the big three. Me, but, yeah, because I was cut off. I never really fully one million percent had the point. And Ja Rule uh, in the big three of his yeah, era? Yeah, because my main my main ultimate point is to at least have it while also being, gee, I don't know, an insanely polarizing while simultaneously popular artist that is making very, very high quality of music. Hence the big three. Kendrick is seen as the lyrical guy, but Kendrick is not just a snooze fest outside of Twitter. Kendrick is not just a snooze fest. J. Cole of the J. Cole of a very similar level. Drake has been seen as the most adaptable guy in the rap game so far. They all have their reasoning as to why they're in the big three. The reason why I brought up Drake being lyrical is because I don't think a person who is not lyrical can be in the big three. Yeah, actually, I and somebody, I somebody in the chat said it. I love somebody y'all. in the chat said it. Somebody in the chat said it, and maybe I'm bugging. Somebody in the chat said it. The big three was just the 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 the, the name they gave specifically to Drake, Kendrick, and Cole for being the leaders of uh, of the current state of rap in the mid 2010s. That's really what it was, honestly, because niggas didn't talk about a big three in terms of who's running rap. They would just talk about who's the best at the moment. But because Kendrick was so sparingly dropping albums and niggas didn't want to reference nobody after the control verse, because Drake was so versatile, as Sage said, and he was such a mainstream hit guy, what's happened to pop, what's happened to whatever you want to tap into, because 
J. Cole at the time would drop lyrical shit. He would drop shit for the soul. He would drop conscious shit, whatever it was. They dubbed them the big three. That's that's what our generation dubbed them for that point of rap. The big three. It was not like in 2000. In 2003, niggas was like, yo, the big three? Jay-Z, DMX, Ja Rule. No! Niggas wasn't doing that. Niggas would just say, hey, Jay-Z's the best. DMX the best. Nelly the best this year. No one ever said, oh, yeah, 2005. T-I-G-Z Gucci. No! That's not how it went. It never was like that before. In the 90s, it was not, oh, sh- uh, 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 fucking Biggie Pocket fucking, I don't know, Kumo D. I know that's not from the 90s. I just named the old nigga. That's not how the discourse was. That shit started with them. Going forward, in the 2020s, watch the next era. They don't give a fuck about no fucking big three. They're just going to hype up whoever the fuck they're going to hype up. They're not going to talk about a big three in the, in, in the later half of the 2020s and in the 2030s. Watch. There's not going to be a big three then. This is gonna be the nigga that's running the game. Niggas in the chat have no clue what they're talking about. Ja Rule is nasty. Say ludicrous. Now that's a real argument. All right, oh, shut that up. Yeah. You don't know about Ja Rule. So can he recover from this? Fuck, this nigga's last 10 messages has my name in it, bro. Are you okay? Damn. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. Uh J. Cole Camp. Um, out of this big three, he is he's Chris Bosch, he's Kevin Love. I mean Pretty high so bar. Oh my! Hey, when you oh, ask me, well, when you ask, when you ask LeBron James, you feel me? He knows. We know. JJ Does Reddick. he know? Hmm. Well, I, I wouldn't expect JJ to know. He was never the important one, so makes sense. I'm just not shocked that he apologized. He was the, he was the third I'm not either. part of the offense in in the Clippers. I mean, I'm not shocked either because pussies gonna be pussies. They gonna bleed. Oh fuck. Damn, yeah, he, he it's, it's no, as much as my glorious king has to deal with the outrage of the people right now, there is no, it's it's no stopping the nigga from saying that right now. It's just like the nigga. It's, no the nigga it's, it's fine. Cool. Nigga, hey, everybody got to find a path. And if your path is judging a man for what sits right with him and his heart and his soul, his spirit, that's what, hey, that's your path, buddy. I just learned to take a step back and find my path in this world. Let me ask y'all if, if he about overnight Damo went from Drewski to fucking Gandhi, dog. This is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy, bro. That's, Peace, love, and positivity, y'all. Come on, bro. True. That nah, that's, that's, that's really positive, bro. Peace, I got no people positivity, Damo, bro. God, God. <laughs> he turned into fucking logic overnight, dog. This is crazy. Positivity, prosperity, my brothers. Come on, find your path. I, I that, so. Find your spirit. Find your light. Come on, man. They about to go on stream tomorrow and watch Could Have Been Record, the Could Have Been House, bro. Like, come on, bro. Goddamn right. Goddamn <laughs> right. Let me let me ask you this: If he would have just let it breathe, like if he didn't come out and apologize, and he like had his little raps out there, what would you have came out here and said? Like, yeah, that's my goat. Da 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 da. I would have said exactly what I said on my stream. Y'all can go watch it. It's, it the vibe is still up. I said it already. Go ahead. I, I might say I said it already. If Kendrick, if the roles were reversed. And Kendrick was the one that, that said sorry or backed out of the the, the, the rap competition. I would have been one of the niggas with a pitchfork in, in a burning cross, calling that nigga all types five flavors of pussy. But he didn't. My guy did. So now I have to take the mature approach. That's what my guy did, man. Do you think he would have took it down if he put out a well received diss track? I thought the diss track yeah. was well received. But no, nah, a lot of people ain't mm-hmm. mm-hmm. a lot of first of all. I mean, a lot like, of people, on some on some like, oh my god, he fucking murdered Kendrick type shit. I don't think that was the reception when this dropped. No, it. I'm not saying that was the reception. I mean, I understand yeah. niggas didn't like it, but I'm saying from when I hear something like that, I would think the majority. I don't think majority of people didn't like it. You could say it was split uh, or whatever, but I don't think majority didn't like it. I think a majority of people thought it was light. Even if yeah, I thought yeah, like he would apologize yeah, quicker, I might say I, if he, I thought like he'd apologize quicker if niggas was on the timeline. Oh my god, he murdered him. Kendrick's over. I think he would apologize the next day. Mm. Was it really? Okay. I think he would apologize regardless. Answer your question. I think he apologized on some. That's just not who he is. Shit. Now, if that makes him a pussy to you, then hey, I disagree. But I'm not gonna be the one to. And my glorious king got to take that one on the chin, man. He knew. He knew what this was, bro. 
Yeah. Dang. I think when you get your when you get your skills tested, like somebody presses your skills, like you can walk around saying whatever you want, and when somebody like really, you know, takes you up on that offer, and you got to show yourself, and then you can't show yourself because you can't really rap like that. That's tough. Yeah, niggas, yo, the album was well, hard, too, by the way. I'm gonna say, yeah, hard. Too, the album was too bad hard. That's not the case. Too bad that's not the case because the nigga did rap and it was hard. And I I like the jabs he threw. So it wasn't like it was bad shit. The shit was cool. Namo, that's just you, dog. That shit was mid. It's not just me. Sage was it mid? What the what the diss or the whole album? Both. Uh the diss, it was cool. I I leave it at oh. cool. I go mid plus. <laughs> like I said. It was cool. It just I like the song. Cool. I like the song. The but this was cool. A, I like the song, but as a diss, it's mid. Yeah, but, it's and mid. then as an it's album, for, I think the album's gas. Yeah, yeah, but it was. Mid. Yeah, I'm not trying to hear a fucking pop hit. Yeah, yeah, like guy, as so. like as a diss, because yeah, I mean, he not. literally says in a song, "It's a fucking warning shot." What am I doing to warning shot? <laughs> like, what am, what am I do with that, bro? Like, I, I'm about to fuck you up, nigga. He was, shit was boring, buddy. So it's like it's a it was a good, it's a good song, but a bad. <laughs> diss. That's what I'm in chat. I go there. It's a good song, but a mid mid diss. I wouldn't say it's bad diss. It's a good uh, song, but a mid diss. A nerd calling a nerd a nerd does not hit. I'm gonna let y'all know that right now. Shit don't hit. This is insane. <laughs> Am I captain? Is Kendrick a nerd? I'm saying boring, boring music guy calling boring music guy boring. Like, come on, bro. Both of y'all shut the hell up and cut Metro Boomin back on. Type oh, shit. I hate us, man. Kendrick and Cole get in the club, man. Y'all some haters. Kendrick and Cole get in the You turn it. You ain't never been around no woman and you cut the, the Jake. Yeah, the hook is in Greece. So you right. You cutting that Drake on first, though. I'll tell you that right now. We got a colorful. Bro, hell off. That's crazy. What did I do? Yeah, man. That's why I be making up stuff just to press you at this point. You're too nice, man. Yeah, bro. I ain't gonna lie. We gotta bring the bear out of you. You, you be pulling. You, you, I'm you not like Bron now, man. You know, you, you you pick your spots. You know what I'm saying? Remember, Bron 2013 just <laughs> just did it. Slot cuts every possession. <laughs> <laughs> you be taking notes when JJ and Bron. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, someone see LeBron do a what? slot cut uh, um um on the Lakers a couple of days ago. Motherfucker said, "That's what JJ taught us. That's what JJ." Taught us. <laughs> I ain't heard a nigga say <laughs> slot cut in all the three years I known this dude, man. This podcast, bro. You gonna hear it now? X five cut. The fuck is a five, bro? Oh, X five chat, yeah. Chat. We will, or uh, ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode. We will see you guys on the next episode, which is really tomorrow. But you know, we're on playback tomorrow, same time, same place, seven o'clock. Playback yep. TV backslash L K I B forward slash backslash uh damo say goodbye to the people uh all right chaz be your mind for your midnight snack and we'll be back tomorrow um i guess i fell off I, I don't know i guess i gotta gotta find gotta find that fire again i guess i don't uh, uh i don't know yeah dude you fell off plus ratio that's true Ox get better. angrier content Ox <laughs> <better>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, say say goodbye to the people alright people um, always remember to finish your story um, and then all, all promos added into it um, I'm going to be recording tonight I might go live around 1-2 I want to make sure I get some videos for the content JJK reactions coming up soon um, and one other thing man uh not too much on uh nah I ain't got that man. <laughs> Be you, bro. I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing, man. Peace out, y'all. <laughs> Yo, he is a kid. Oh my god. You got too many, bro. <laughs> I'm a kid too. We just kid. We just children. I'm a kid. Be uh, so sick about it. <laughs> He gonna kill us for this, bro. Peace out, bro. I'm gonna throw it. Oh, shit. Peace out, y'all. Bye. <laughs> All right, bye, guys. Jesus Christ. <laughs> 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 <laughs>